Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. While you're in sunny Florida, be sure to visit... Orlando! Enter into a world of epic adventure. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Orlando. Yes. This is Adam. This and is Nicholas. And this is Mark. Yes, the three of awesome. us are back. We've yes. been on like a long break. Yeah, it has yeah. It has been a long break. Oh, it's, 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 it's been a busy one, I have busy. to say. Uh, I know uh, down here in Florida, I think all of us were being blessed by Nurgle multiple times. Yeah. I know I have. We yeah. have yeah. So, family vacations. Yeah. Like, uh, the, we, mm-hmm. Alternatively, we were each out of town. Yep. Uh, just yeah. alternating weekends and then yep. sick and then busy with work. And, and then just sick again. Like, yeah, like yeah, from I don't know what's going on, and we, then and then we're in a pollen season down here, so that's oh, actually an official season. It down makes you here in feel Florida. like you're sick. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's, and then it, all of a sudden you'll be like, "Oh, I'm sick," and then you're like, "Oh, I'm not sick." Oh, yeah. I'm no, sick. I'm no, no, no. Yeah, I'm sick. <laughs> if you haven't experienced the pollen season in the southern United States, southeast United States, don't. Oh man, <laughs> ever. It's, it's thick. There's places where I can go outside and actually scoop up handfuls of yellow pollen. Yeah, some, like, some I can like yeah. oh, make no. a ball of pollen. Pollen fights. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The North shovel snow. We yeah. shovel pollen. Yeah, you think like, oh, that pollen count's really high. What does that really mean? It means you can actually like my green yeah. car is yellow with <laughs> pollen. It's yep. just it, throughout the day, it just collects. It, it, you don't have to have allergies. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's actual poison in the air. It's actual like they yeah. talk about like the smog alerts in mm-hmm. like California and mm-hmm. everything. We have pollen alerts. <clears throat> yep. It's that bad. Yeah. And it's always like here's a map of the country and where's pollen bad? It's like Florida fucked. <laughs> yeah. Central Texas yeah. fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just awful. I, I swear to God, it's like the uh, what's the movie with uh, Mark Wahlberg? Oh. Yeah, M Night Shyamalan movie. The happening. Movie, uh, the, uh, the happening. Yes, yes. Where the trees are killing yeah, everyone. Yeah, I feel like that's the uh, yeah, case. I actually. think there's I, truth I, I, to we, that. We live that every day. I have a pseudoscience theory that I like to throw out when mm. I'm drunk at parties, and this this counts. So my pseudoscience theory is that so the way I understand evolution to work, it's only the strong that survive, right? Well, mm-hmm. Darwinism, right? Right. So the trees. Yeah. Yeah reproduce with pollen by pollinating so as we cut down more trees the only trees they're going to be able to re- reproduce are the ones that produce the most pollen and spread it the furthest mm. so if we keep cutting down trees the only trees left are going to be trees that just jizz pollen everywhere <laughs> that just produce the biggest thickest rain of jizz pollen yeah and that's really what it is yeah so, I really don't like the thought. <laughs> That's what we're breathing. <laughs> why? When your why nose do you have is, to bring that up? <laughs> anytime you're congested, anytime you're like, my yeah. hay fever is acting up. Yeah, no. you're just full of yeah. tree sperm. It's your, it's, so it's your, basically your jizz fever. <laughs> yeah, your tree exactly. jizz fever. It's, it's just like oh, tree just bukkake. It. Just bukkake of tree. <laughs> all, all, each one of us, when we walk out the door. Just, uh, uh, just, just reveling in it. Just reveling in it. <laughs> Tree bukkake. Don't Google it. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we got a long list if you don't of, know of, what of things not to Google. Believe me. Don't Google it. This is, <laughs> I guess it's not a family podcast, but it's in, yeah. it's a foreign word. So if you if it's cursing in a different language, is it really cursing? It doesn't really count. It doesn't count. No, right? it, doesn't count. it only counts if you know what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So hey, and sperm on. is part of life. It's true. That's a genetic. It's the it's start like, of life. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that is just that's a scientific term. Yeah. yeah. You know what it is. Yeah, you know exactly. what pollen is. It's not a dirty word to say pollen. Yeah. So kids, so. if your parents haven't told you yet, then uh, <laughs> go ask them right go now. Go ask them right now. Tell them we told don't, you to ask. I don't want you to have learned it from a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> about yeah. Warhammer and Dungeons and Dragons and yes. drunk people. <laughs> So, but yeah. So, if you're first time listening to us, we are we are uh, primarily Warhammer and Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Mm-hmm. Really? Sometimes yeah. tree genetics. Yep. Uh, a little bit about that. Yeah. A little bit about that. We, lo- yeah. we we watch a lot of movies. We drink a lot of beer, and mm-hmm. we like to relate all of it together. Together in some way. 
It's all the fun stuff. What are we drinking? What's our beer tonight? Uh, this tonight is a new release by the wonderful uh, brewing company called uh, Lagunitas. Mm. And uh, it is uh, the Waldos, I believe. Right? Yeah. The Waldo, Waldos. Yeah. 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 Very it's tasty. Good. Very yeah. awesome. It's, yeah. uh, it is good. A little too good. Yeah, it's got a nice it's a light IPA little, kind of, little floral uh, notes to it. Yeah, just right. it's got that creamy texture to like the uh, like uh, a little bit like the hop stupid that mm-hmm. they put out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, For, even like a little creamier. Yeah, like the carbonation strong. It's yeah. almost like drinking a soda. Yeah, yeah, it's really tasty. Yeah, yeah. enjoying it. Strong cream soda. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I would, you could say a hard cream soda. That's yeah, what call it. Like, right. It's like a hard butter beer. Yeah, right. old granddad's cream soda or yeah. something like that. Is that what they say? <laughs> old dad. <laughs> old granddad. Isn't there like old a dad. brand of root beer uh, that's like your dad's root beer or your your you know? I, I feel like it's too close to the previous conversation. Yeah. Right? Let's just. I just want to <laughs> yeah. move on. Yeah, that's too. Uh, <laughs> your that's old too I feel like there's like grand, old old granddad is like a type of whiskey. I think too. Right? Is it? It's a type of liquor, but Google if you it. say old granddad's Google cream it. soda. <laughs> Google old, it. Yeah. We're, old, we're, 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 oh, we're, I heard the stories, old granddad's we, cream we, soda. That's where you came from. Yeah, you came from. Uh-huh. <laughs> old granddad's old cream granddad's soda. Cream soda. <laughs> <laughs> we should put that out. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. That's really just just all. I mean, because I think about podcasts, and I think about when I listen to podcasts, and I think about like I'm trying to drive to work, and someone's talking about Granddad's Bukkake, <laughs> and then you get to work and you're ready to go. I was gonna say, what 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 what, <laughs> right. what, what, what better way to start your day? I that? guess it depends on your line of work. Yeah, though that yeah. is true. And you're sitting around the 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 conference table and everybody's like so what what did you guys last learn before you came in today i'd like to know enlighten like me a, a, a team yeah. building moment yeah, like exactly. yeah what was the most recent thing you learned well right. i googled the word bukkake <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> old granddad's bukkake. <laughs> and you know clicked images and oh, it, it was no. just over <laughs> no no nothing good to be all right uh, so anyway warhammer so what's been yeah. going on uh, in the world of Warhammer? So we're right now recording oh this in early May. Uh, it's actually May, May the fourth. Yes, fourth. May the fourth be with you, May May. The four- and also with you. Yes, thank you. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> as, yeah, as a Catholic, I always need to respond and also to that. With you. Yeah, <laughs> or I was going to say <laughs> recovering you. Catholic. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I would like to talk about my ongoing saga with White Dwarf. Mm. You have had the epic battle. You have gone toe to toe with them. You yes. have, I have seen your your pain, your frustration, uh, many different levels of all of that. Um, tell us, please, because uh, I know we highlighted it a few times on the previous episodes. Yes. We talked. Um, I have officially uh, canceled my white white dwarf subscription. I am done. I am out. I am done. I called them and I talked to them. And every every time it was late, I would call them and I'd say, "Hey, you know, my subscription's late again. Is there anything going on?" And they'd say, "Nope, it's just running late. We're sorry, it's late. Here's an extra month." So this happened for a few months, and then they put out something very recently that said. All right, we're having a problem with our American distributor. When we ship it to the distributor who who takes it from the warehouse and then sends it to people's homes, this distributor uh, cannot guarantee the time we guarantee as part of your subscription. So our we cannot guarantee the time we said. What they used to say when I signed up, what they said was, get it the same weekend directly to your home. Mm-hmm. You know, so oh yeah. Usually it's the first Friday or first Saturday of the month that it shows up in stores. You're supposed to, as a subscriber, you're supposed to get your White Dwarf the first Saturday of the month every month. That's their deal. That's what I signed up for. It hasn't happened at all. Yeah. And so every month it doesn't show up on that Saturday. I I call them and I say, hey, you know, the following Monday I call them. I say, hey, you know, it was supposed to be here Saturday. It never showed up. I said, well, we're very sorry. Here's an extra month to your subscription. Mm -hmm. So then they put this thing out that said, well, now we're not going to guarantee going forward. They emailed everybody that has a subscription. They said the Friday after that is the last day it can be delivered and we will still consider it on time. 
So if it's the second what? Saturday of the month and you haven't got it, then it's late. Hmm. So expect it before the second Saturday. That's their new standard. Before the second Saturday. That's not right to me. Well, but that hasn't happened. It still hasn't happened. Right. Yeah. So not even within that week span. No. Right. I so, so just got April's April's. Thing. Yeah, I got White April's dwarf. was it Monday? Yeah. When yours came Saturday? The same day you got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's I've had it in my possession. The April issue I've had in my possession for less than a week. Right. And it's May already. Yeah. It's May. It's May the fourth, like yes. we just said. <laughs> so three days before the end of April we got our um White Dwarf. From yeah. For April. For for April. Yeah. This is also, side note, real quick, yeah. your second rendition of issues with White Dwarf. Because yes, issues maybe, with my White Dwarf issues. Yeah. So two years ago, maybe, mm -hmm. you had also subscribed to White Dwarf. I did. And it was the same thing where it was the same kind of problem. It but was they had actually subscriber. guaranteed that you would get it before the store got it, right? They Wasn't said that... you would get it the same day. Oh, okay. They, okay. What, they, what the subscription thing I signed up for back then was get it the same day and it was like a special deal get it cheaper and the same day mm -hmm. if you subscribe instead of buying it in the store yeah and, and it's, that's what i signed up for and they kept telling me like well we're giving you the issues i'm like i know but i didn't just sign up to get the issue i had right. to go to the store and get it what i signed up for was getting it at my home the same day as you can get it in the store that's what i signed up for yeah and if you can't do that then that's not what i signed up for so yeah. That was the last time, and the last time was what they kept telling me was it, the American distribution group, the whatever company handler that they signed up for within America, completely dropped the ball two years ago, and now they've got a new one, and this one's dropping the ball. And this one, like, screwed it up so that they ended up being a whole month almost behind again for April. Yeah. And now they won't guarantee it. Yeah, less than a week late. Like they, they, they'll say, you'll you'll get it between the first Saturday and the second Saturday. Now, of well, the month. I, I actually just emailed them too. Yeah, and what they say, and they they said uh, we can't guarantee that you'll get it, like by a certain time. They, they can't just say, say no. They they actually told they me they say a certain time. Yeah, they didn't tell me that I would that they would guarantee it by a certain date. They just said they couldn't give you anything <clears throat> whatsoever. Well, what no. they said was, "Hey, you're getting the special issue cover." Like, I don't care, right? <laughs> you yeah. know, seriously. No, yeah, I'm not a collector. Yeah. I, the only thing I want is the information as soon as possible. Right. Yeah, and that's what I told them. I said in the email, like, "Hey, you know, I would rather just go pick it up at the store the day it comes out, or a couple days after it yeah. comes out. If I, you know, if I'm not guaranteed to get it." at the same time yeah and if you can't guarantee that then then i'd i'd rather support my local store yeah i agree so. absolutely yeah wholeheartedly it's true. because it's you know right so you dropped your subscription what i just you? dropped and my just subscription dropped it as well, well. so so let's visit that, our favorite stores yeah that's yeah. it i i go like it because i i did not have one so I would go to the store, and it was nice because I, usually I needed some other things, a couple, you know, pots of paint, you know, maybe another brush, get to talk to the store owner for a little bit, you know, yeah. see what he's been doing up to, maybe meet some new people who are there gaming. That's a yeah. nice experience. Yeah. So I don't understand. And another thing I don't understand is, you know, with, with the digital age, why why wouldn't it come out? you know, in a digital format? Well, they had a problem. They, they canceled their digital edition. And I don't know what the deal was with that either. That they, mm. they had a digital white dwarf and they just yeah. canceled it. They stopped doing Cause, it. Because it seems like if they did that, they wouldn't have any problem with it Delivery getting out there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe they were cutting into their own profits. I mean, it was like a financial thing. I don't know what the reason would be to cancel the digital edition, but they did. They canceled the digital yeah. edition. So when... Whoa. Whoa! Yeah. Good my save. Just brief tremor good, here yep. in Central Florida. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm gesturing. I'm a very gesture when I talk kind of person. Yes. I, and I, my beer is out of my line of sight, and I almost gestured my beer right off the table. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I called them, talked to them on the phone, and said that okay, this is it. I'm not going to do it anymore. 
canceling my subscription. Like good for you. I want my money back. Yeah. And I said, well, it looks like you've had several issues already. So the best we can yes, do. Yes, I have had several, <laughs> several issues. I've already. had many issues with my issues. <laughs> uh, so I have been delivered four issues of White Dwarf. Mm. And they said, well, because of that, and because you keep, you know, every time you've had a problem, we've renewed your subscription with a new starting date. So at this point, uh, you are going to get both. A if you cancel today, you're going to get the April that, that I hadn't received yet at that time. And you're going to get May. It's going to be delivered to you. Um, so if you cancel now, we'll pay you back the 12 month minus the two issues, which ended up being something like $75. And they said, or <laughs> we'll give you the full year subscription money back as uh, GW money, like okay. uh, website uh, credits and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right? like a okay, voucher, right. like a credit right. on gotcha. the website. Yeah. Mm. So I did end up going with that. I went with okay. a $90 credit on the website. Right. Was and the yeah the option i took what, what did you end up doing they didn't give me an option they didn't give you what did they do they just said your money's refunded oh. the whole thing 90 dollars. i don't know they didn't oh. they i asked oh. them i said well they just said hey your your subscription is canceled and okay i said <clears throat> okay yeah so does that mean like i get my money back or and they said yes your money has been refunded ah. so i have to look in my account and then i guess i'll see Oh, if please it's, now. you know, like, if, did I get my full, you know, $90 subscription back? Or did they or just did pay they you back? prorate it based on how many issues they I've received? Because I think I started a month after you. So I yeah. think I've gotten three issues yeah. since I've started. So uh, I'll I'll see. They didn't really give me the option. And I, I wasn't really going to argue with them. But I'm, I'm going to argue with them. I want to argue with them. Well, <laughs> you I know mean, what? let's yeah, call yeah, them I mean, right depends. now and argue. You know, like if I get $25 back, that's different. But if I get... If I get my your full ninety, my full ninety back, yeah. then, that then then yes, yeah, we're problems all good. been solved. Yeah. So what? Okay. So say they come back and they give you your money back minus the issues you've received. Then yeah. what's your next step there? Um, <clears throat> I think I'll ask. You know, oh, so I get my so like I don't know. I guess I'll email them back and say, well, you you said you would refund me my subscription. The total like subscription wasn't refunded. Yeah. Yeah, you you know it's minus fifteen dollars or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I'll see what they say. Yeah, but I'll because then I'll see what they come back with. Yeah, but yeah. I'll leave that open because it's, I'd like my fifteen dollars back. But yeah, sure. Because I feel like it was like I feel like my experience um, yes. was not top notch. No, and and and, and it's not customer that service. like it's basic customer service. It is it really what it is. Is is it's um, I could have just gone to the store and gotten it. Yes. Could have. It's a subscription. Yep. You know, in in today's day and age, the information age. Why is it that m for me to get my copy, I have to wait three more weeks past when everybody else can just go to the store and pick it up? Yeah. I there's no committed reason. to a year, paid a year's up front to get this subscription and now I'm waiting three weeks more than everybody else f multiple months in a row yeah my you know it, it, it's kind of like well it's not like it's a cheap magazine no that's it's, what it is it, it, it's not like we're playing a cheap game it's not a cheap magazine it's not any of that yeah. it's like so if you're going to pay if you're going to charge me a high price to be a part of this game then you need to deliver a high price quality product yeah and part of that product <clears throat> service is, is is the service yeah. is the delivery yeah, yeah. of the product yeah that's that's what we've paid for and, that, and it was clear prior to their more recent updates their recent policy but you, you know that policy you even that i don't think that policy maybe that policy is there now for people that would subscribe now hmm. but if it's not up front that you're not going to get it that first weekend of the month. That's that's a big deal. It needs yeah. to be upfront, black and white. You will not get yeah. this on time. Yeah. yeah. And they were giving you no date. Like yeah. like you'll get it eventually. Yeah. You know, you Correct. might get it with next month's. Correct. You know, you might yeah. get it after next month. Yeah. Who knows? Hey, you what don't know. Oh, no, exactly. And, we got nothing for you. And honestly, like when I look at the content of what's coming in the White Dwarf, when I actually read this most recent White Dwarf, I didn't. I wasn't actually impressed. No, yeah, me either. I so there's interesting stuff. Yeah. They are there are uh, the one thing in the April issue that I really liked. There was a uh, 
an Age of Sigmar code of conduct section. Yep. That was interesting. Yeah, and I I, I want to go over that again and, and, and put that out there and talk yeah. about it more. But it was like uh, how to behave when you're playing with someone you haven't played with before, or if you're at a tournament or something like that. How like what's the code of conduct that we expect of fellow Age of Sigmar players? You know, yeah. what? I think there's uh, some people out there that uh, really need to take notes on that. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. And right? It, and and it is have... interesting to hear from Jarvis Johnson. Yeah, Jarvis or Jarvis Johnson. Not Jarvis. <laughs> Jarvis, take the wheel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Avengers. Uh, uh, but Jarvis. Jarvis Johnson. He's, he's not. Sorry. He's not Tony Stark's butler. No. No. Yeah. No. But, he, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to see that put in black and white. Here's what we expect of each other. It's, yeah. a, it's our our social compact, and that it pa- passes forward, passes on to other people. That mm-hmm. this is what we expect yeah. of each other. Expectant fellow players. Yeah, there's interesting stuff in there, and, and I look at White Dwarf, and I expect what we used to get from Dragon Magazine in the 80s and early 90s, which the Dungeons and Dragons was Dragon Magazine. That's the one that TSR put out in the 80s, and that was. I, I think they are comparable magazines as far as content and yes. quality yeah. and depth. Yeah. They are comparable, and I think in a lot of ways, White Dwarf is better in a lot of ways, but there's a lot of ways that Dragon was better, too, and that Dragon always had something, it always had something you could add to your game. Agreed, and that yeah. that was going to be my it, comment as well. Yeah. That, Big plus. Yeah, so White Dwarf, whatever game I'm playing, if I'm going to pay you know that $9 for this magazine each magazine should have something that adds to my game Mm -hmm. and if i'm 40k sigmar underworlds whatever game i'm playing or that they're putting out yeah whatever game some content there needs to be something in there that i can add to my experience and there's always great tutorials and always great guides Mm -hmm. with painting and and articles with people's experience and there's lore and there's stuff but but they put a lot of that out already Online. on like Warhammer TV and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I got so and stuff. Yeah, I feel like stuff, the yeah. the painting side of it isn't so introspective because like uniquely introspective. Yeah. Whereas because I feel like I can get that from Warhammer TV <clears throat> on and, YouTube. And all these <clears throat> other people that aren't officially yeah. GW, they're out there on YouTube. Yeah. They are creating that kind of content. Like you want to paint it in a certain scheme, mm-hmm. teach you how to use an airbrush, teach you how to use the different types of painting techniques, dry brushing, yeah, We're edge blending. highlighting, yep. yeah, all, all that. that. Yep. yep. Um, but if they gave me something that I could use with another person in a game, mm-hmm. I understand. Like if they were to say, like, "Hey, here's an artifact," and it's like, okay, but in order to get the artifact, I have to buy the magazine. You know what I mean? Like now, and then now it's gonna... turned into like in-app purchase style stuff. Yeah. But and that's not and yeah, that's it's not something you can really right. Yeah. I don't feel like I would want that. I feel like, but like, hey, here's a, here's a battle plan to play yes. with another person. Like, it's that's a great even, example. It's a that's, balanced. I like that. It's yeah. a sort of balance. Yeah. So, like, when I started, my first white dwarf purchase ever was this subscription three months ago. That's your first white dwarf you've ever bought. First white dwarf purchase ever. Because when I first started this game, I was like. I don't have the money to spend on White Dwarf and these models and game. I need to spend it on the game and the models so I can play. Plus right. the paint, Focus the glue, fire. Right. the everything, the, yeah. the new battle bags, right. like all the stuff to bring. Yeah, right. It's, so, it's, it's yeah. a financially burdening right. hobby. Right. So, so I'm not working for pennies anymore. And so now I can actually afford a White Dwarf subscription. So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. And the first month was brand new skirmish rules. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's there were two reasons I resubscribed after my two years ago experience where I said never again. And then but then I did it again. Yeah. I drew my line in the sand, they stepped over it and I said, Okay. Uh draw a new line. I yeah. drew a new line. <laughs> <laughs> and they and they stepped over it. So huh. uh but Okay, so the two reasons. One, because we're doing this podcast, and I want to be informed. Yeah, I want to. I want to just have 
even I, I, I'm not gonna have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. I don't want all the answers. But I want is a lot of information. You know, I want to yeah. just, I just want to know what's out there. You know, and have lots of ways to consume that information. But the other reason that hooked me was new skirmish rules. Yeah, and I thought that skirmish. What what I think if I was them, if they wanted to bring it back and save it skirmish is how i think they should go forward i think they should say that skirmish is a it's a narrative play Mm -hmm. it's not like you know three ways to play skirmish is you know it's somewhere in between the matched and the skirmish or or the narrative but it's if they had skirmish content every month yeah if they guaranteed skirmish content every month i guarantee i would I, i pretty much guarantee that i would buy it every month yeah if there was new skirmish battle plans and new, it's yeah. fun. It's fun, and I and yeah. I think it's a good uh, uh, gateway. They had for m- players to get into it. Yes, and exactly. And new players. Yes. Yeah, you know, and, and, and it's it's soft. <clears throat> it's a soft way yeah. to enter. You know, just thinking yeah. like you have a you have a son that's getting into it. He's just painting up some models. I bought my uh, I bought my nephew a starter mm-hmm. box. You know the the Tempest Soul or whatever it was yeah. box. Yeah. You know, like you can start skirmish with those models. There's like skirmish yeah. would be perfect for people entering the game, and then people in the game to just say, "Hey, let's get some quick games in tonight. We're gonna yeah. play skirmish. It's gonna be the low points. We're just gonna like." And the narrative the aspect, basics are the, the same. growing, you know, all that stuff. You don't need any extra stuff like Underworlds. Underworlds is a big financial commitment. It yeah, seems right. small because it's a twenty five dollar box, but competitively it, like yeah eventually you it's need like cards, x-wing you, you need cards you need, you need boosters and boosters and boosters yep you know whereas this was hey you've got the models it's just a smaller scale faster play and it's huge it, like it, the opening of Love narrative it. is great yeah but they i feel like they blew their wad in that first issue because yep. they released new rules they released new artifacts new uh command traits and new battle plans all in one issue. It was like, yeah. spread it out. Why can't you yeah. do one we, issue we are with the, the rules, another issue, release some artifacts, another issue, release some command traits, another issue, some battle plans. That would have been smart. four months worth of content right there. Or take the battle plans and really do a nice set of battle plans. Yeah, battle plans, And then release campaigns. those in multiple months. You know, campaigns. Yeah. Anyway. Yep, all back to, I just feel like it was like started high and it went, to me, mm-hmm. for the value, $9 magazine went, you know, yeah. low fast. There's a, there's a couple of our, 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 man, beer, and uh, we had some Bugmans earlier. The first thing that goes <laughs> for me is my ability to articulate, which is such a smart thing that I should do a podcast while I'm drinking if I can't articulate. So... The issues. <laughs> what I really liked was that they were covering, uh, among other things, uh, the skirmish. They were also doing these like in depth looks at the mortal realms in Age of Sigmar. And with us doing the podcast, um, uh, they're just a couple months behind us as far as like our talks of each of the realms. And we're going to talk about the realm of light tonight. Uh, but seeing how they talk about the different realms and they talk about how you would paint and model oh uh, in the your, issues yeah, yeah in the yeah. issues in the issues they were talking about these different ways to do that so that's they're i'm looking forward to that each month but that's only eight months yeah you yeah. know like they're gonna run out of that too that is interesting you're right that is nice like they have good content but yeah. i don't know if it's necessarily like as for the price I don't yeah. know if it's worth it. And, and not mm. only that, you can't play the game by yourself. It's not a one-player game. So there's three of us that hang out regularly. Yeah. Between if it's that, if it's just like one or two articles that we care about, right? Why not buy one issue and just pass, pass it, it back and forth? Yep. Yep. You know, the, why subscribe? What? Why? How are you getting me to subscribe to this magazine? Right. That right, that for content, me, that gaming content to hold the book to have the rules so I can look at it before mm-hmm. we show up. That is value. Yeah, you know. Yeah, 
there's um what i think of um dungeons and dragons as being like the comparison of, of like a model that i think gw can look to try and match try to achieve dungeons and dragons has the adventurers league and so the adventurers yes. league is an organized league where they like monthly release content that goes to approved dungeon masters. And so they get these unique uh, adventures for Dungeons and Dragons that go to the dungeon masters and you show up to an official adventurers league game. And then what you, you, you have your own ID number and you play through your adventures league game. And that way your, your character is in Canon in Dungeons and Dragons. Yep your magic items the missions you've completed yeah. the they all the carry contacts, over. it all it's carries all over yeah. you become part of this like deeper world and i think there's something there that um skirmish could have done skirmish could have been a part of that what they do with the um the neos i can't remember what mm. neo stands for it's the something uh event organizer the narrative event organizer mm. for white uh, for for uh age of sigmar those are the neos and we played in a little bit of those we, mm -hmm. we played the one with the the big monster the god monster thing that we did yeah, a couple yeah. years ago and yep. then last year was a or two years ago was the prequel to my importance mm. yep right right so that is similar to the adventures league where it is in canon mm -hmm. and it is part of the realm I, I wanted something like that that was a smaller scale yeah that was a skirmish scale adventurers league i think that's something that could be achieved i don't know exactly how like right now off the top of my head but i think that's something they could put out every month and if there was something like skirmish where you're part of this ongoing skirmish campaign with your friends every month it comes out every month you compete for an artifact yeah you know what i mean like like okay here's the new skirmish plan i gotta play you and me we're playing up oh, this month i got the artifact yeah you know it's like that one and done thing like no, this this hero has this artifact going forward because we played this we're, we're in game and that's that's the thing too what was the uh the 40k thing you were talking about the oh yeah the the build your own build 40k a, build character. a character oh, yeah. that's uh, what i thought was yeah. coming next yeah, for yeah, skirmish no. yeah yeah and no and I delayed this idea of mine, and I'm just like mad that I did because it could have been fleshed out and ready mm -hmm. to go. And we I'm should, like, gah! We should do our own version of it and yep. share it with people and get some feedback. All right. By the time this episode comes out, I'll We're, I'll create an Age of Sigmar version of build a character modified from the chapter yes. approved 40 k Yes, book. that's what we need. All right. War Cry is on the horizon that's yeah. supposed to come out this summer whatever it ends up being i don't i still think it's going to be something that's going to be unlike skirmish i think it's going to be requiring a big dollar investment or skirmish excuse me he's he's, or, he's getting emotional guys yeah, you, he's you know, and gals yeah. i'm so emotional <laughs> <laughs> but like yes seriously there is there's a lot of you talk about dollar investment, yes. okay? It's a war cry, or what's the 40K equivalent of what we think war cry is, is Kill be? team? Kill team. Yeah. Kill team. There's there's a financial investment involved. Yeah. For skirmish, it's well, being yeah. a part of skirmish, it is what you have, yeah. but that's what White Dwarf could be that financial investment. Yeah. If you want to participate in this skirmish adventurers league right you have to get white dwarf every month right because it's going to carry through month yeah. to month giving you the information and that's a reasonable oh, thing it would just be, See, that, yeah. be cool. you would be subscribing I, I, to this i would be excited yeah. about that yes yeah that's yeah. that's the way they could go and mm. look seriously mm -hmm. games workshop my name's adam mark Nicholas, the three of us, if you want this to happen, just get in touch with us. We will make it work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Done deal. Yeah. Done. We will we will we will jump in as your American uh white dwarf skirmish adventures league. Yes. Yeah, we're ready to go. All right, so that was our that, huge, that, that was our intro. That was our intro <laughs> where we talk about fucking white dwarf. <laughs> All right. right. <laughs> uh, so let's see how far we're in. 
Yeah, we're just about uh, a little past 30 minutes in. Yeah. Uh, what we want to talk about tonight is Heish. 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 We were talking about Heish is the realm of light. Yes. It's one of the mortal realms, the realm of light. And that's what we're going to talk about this evening. We were talking about how all the other realms, this is the last realm for us to cover all the other realms. We had like a specific way we would say it. Yeah. And, you know, we just bought the Carrion Empire box. Yes. With all the... With the vampires? With, with the vampires. So what if I was a vampire and I woke up and just pulled the curtains? Yeah. And I was in Haish. I'd be like, Hi Haish! Oh, the light! <laughs> the light! <laughs> ah. And just like if you've been drinking beers with these assholes all night, <laughs> yep. you wake up the next morning and your wife throws back the curtain. Yeah. Haish! <laughs> oh, the undead! Oh, yes, the undead and the hungover—they're yes, very yes. similar people. Yeah, not not too far uh, <laughs> apart. So uh, we'll take a quick break. Yes, and we're going to start talking about. Hi! Hi! It sounds so painful. Hi! <laughs> The energies of Haish shine so brightly, they light up even the most distant parts of the cosmos. At its best, the realm of light is a place of unbound intellect and universal illumination. At its worst, its light is blinding and hypnotic. Those dazzled by their own obsessions find a strange darkness there instead. And we're back from our break. Yes. We got some new beers. What are we drinking now? Terrapin? Terrapin. Yeah. This is the Terrapin High Five, right? No. Uh, no, this is the Negative. pineapple. The pineapple. Yeah, the pineapple. Something pineapple. Something crunkle. Something pineapple crunkle. IPA. Yes. Yeah. Something we should look it up, but we're not going to because those cans are way over there and we're over here. It's a long ways away. Right. It's way too far away. But yeah, that's what we're drinking. We, we've moved it's on to this tasty. terrapin. Cheers. So it's cheers. At all. Yeah. Here we are. And it's not as evil as uh, what uh, some people say pineapple and ham pizza. Mm. No. That is not mm. evil. I, I don't understand it. That Like, you're supposed to be like, is it like a gay or, or nay? People in our society today draw these black and white lines mm. when there is a gray area there is a yeah. time for a pineapple yeah, pizza no, it's good you yeah. know it's you not always good or always salty. bad it's uh, it's good it's like a you know kettle corn of pizza you know that maybe most of the time it's not what you want but there's a time when it's okay yeah, you know exactly. it, and when yeah, it, you know let's right. let's be more forgiving and accepting in our society to know, say it's exactly. okay you know we've had uh, some anchovies here you yeah, know? we've had lots of anchovies here because I usually uh, request them. I, you know, uh, it's not my thing. I, I, you know what? I tried anchovies just to say I tried anchovies, yeah. and they're they're okay. And I could see a time where I'd be like, you know what? I'm in the mood for. I'm in the mood for an anchovy, and it's you know that's that's a once in a while kind of thing. And don't huh. shun those people. You don't shun those people. No. You don't say those people are bad or evil. No, just be happy that they Good. enjoy enjoy the. Because uh, I think salty I'm one of fish. those people. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, it. I mean, it, I think that's where. Have I, you ever? Had I think one? everybody has a pizza they don't want to eat. Have you ever had an anchovy? Nope. I have. Honestly, oh, okay. I've never had a pizza that I didn't want to eat. Hmm. Even no. the ones with mac and cheese on. I, I definitely okay. have. Had what I'll say, and I'll that revise my the one statement. That you said was chaotic evil. So yeah, well, yeah. no, that wasn't my chart. That was no, just okay. a chart yes. I found. Okay, yeah. I'll revise my statement. Okay, go my for it. statement and say everybody should be allowed a pizza they don't like. Uh, that's oh, fine. Yes. That's fine. Of yes. course. Yeah, we're not going to take that away 100%. from anyone. Yes, and that's an, that's an important thing too. So I will say the only pizza I will not eat. Is an anchovy pizza, yeah, and I, you know, to, and that would, not was, only because you mentioned it specifically, but because, you know, I had this pizza and it was so good, mm-hmm. and it was great, 
and I went back to the. I, I didn't remember exactly what it was. I was young. I was in, I was a, a teen know, in high school. Yeah, I was new teen, to the world. Yeah, new to the world. New Great to ordering eye, my own tailed. food. Right. <laughs> And I and uh, and 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 so I had this friend, and he he worked at a pizza shop. His parents owned a pizza shop, so I went to the pizza shop, and I was like, "Oh, I can't remember what it is that I had at this other place, but that's what I would like." And he was like, "Well, uh, what's it? What is it? Like, you know, do you remember?" And I was like, "Just think about it." And I was like, "Ah, it starts with an A." And I was like, ah, "I can't remember A A A something." And he was like, Artichoke. "Anchovy," and I was like, "Sure." And he was like, great, well, here you go. Boom. And I was like, and I was like, oh. Oh, no. That's no, not it at all. This is what not was, it. No. What was the correct answer? Artichoke. artichoke. It was artichoke. Yeah. Artichoke yep. pizza. And I was yeah. like, artichokes on pizza of pizza yeah. are legit. Yeah. yeah. I love them. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. You could put anything on pizza. There's, You it, know what? It's, but it's, to it's, me, anchovies, I'm like, eh, not so much. Say, like, I think there's a narrow, like, Saying you can make a sandwich out of anything mm-hmm. is okay. just just slightly broader than saying you put anything on a pizza. Yeah. You know, like there is really you can like anything that has like a like a the only sandwich like I make without with pe- stuff on top of it, like without cheese, is peanut butter and jelly. Probably you could you could put that in a pizza. It's the only <laughs> sandwich you eat without cheese is peanut butter and jelly. Probably, yeah. yeah. Name another sandwich that you would eat without. That well, you could, that you could not add cheese to. That you could not add uh, that cheese. You to. Definitely not. Well, I think you could add cheese to a PB and J. I'm sure there's some cheese out there. Like some cheese connoisseur is like, well, yes, yes. Yeah. Like, if you. I was gonna say like mm, a like 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 like, like a mellow some monster edema, edema, with a yeah. peanut butter <laughs> jelly. I mean, that that might not be. Good. I I think that bad. cheddar and peanut yeah. butter go very well together, and I've had mm. like sandwiches mm. that weren't mm. like. I've had the um, at different restaurants they'll serve a cheeseburger that has peanut butter on it. Oh yeah, would, that's right. Would you yeah. dunk yeah. a peanut butter cheddar jelly sandwich into milk and eat it? Oh hell yeah, yeah, I can see you eating that. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like all oh. my favorite like toddler things in one. <laughs> You know, when I was a toddler, and they, like and they, just and you know they, what, just and, throw it in a blender. Why yeah, don't you? Yeah. Well, okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's let's talk about Aish. 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 Let's oh, do the it. The room of light. I have a just feeling we're, 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 we're going to be doing that uh, in a couple hours. Oh actually. my god! Oh my Tomorrow god. morning yeah. is going to be rough. It's it's getting late. It's like, like eleven o'clock. It's a little after eleven. All right. Yeah. Aish. Yes. yes, the Heish. last realm we haven't Heish. talked about. Heish is the realm of light. So tell me about this. What do you want to know? Well, I want to know everything about it. <sighs> yeah. I want to know what is it like in this realm. What 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 does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? Mm-hmm. The there? language, the language yeah. that Games Workshop tends to use. Mm-hmm. One of the things they talk about is being the fractured realm, which okay. which I think is you know you're talking about light. You're talking about Glass, right? So we're uh, talking like refract- prisms, 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 prisms fractured, refractured, fractured. Yeah. The, uh, the language of lenses and prisms yeah. and gemstones. That language shows up frequently in the realm of light. Okay, this sounds like a, like some hippie shop or something. Yeah, like that. I see it a lot of like shop. Yeah. sepia S- tones. Of patchouli. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you, you can get crystals and bongs. We got a lot of CTO of filters, CTB filters, <laughs> CT. Now what? What about your chakra? <laughs> what? Uh, there. We have all this like. Th- there's some cool stuff. There is okay, some cool great. stuff that happens yeah. in the realm of light. So. It's all about the elves. It, I think the, it is the 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 story of the elves uh-huh. takes place in the realm of light and the realm of shadow. The yin and yang, the hot, the light elves and the dark elves. Yeah, yes. the high elves and the dark elves yes. of the old world. That's what Olgu and Heish, the realm of light and the realm of shadow, and they're this yin and yang, and the, the, these two realms have a very specific relationship. Olgu. Oh, Ooh. And hi, hi. Uh, I think it sounds so painful. Yeah, if you it like, I, I just picture tomorrow mm. morning. I'm gonna be totally hungover, and it's gonna yeah. be time to do the lawn. And Haley's gonna wake me up, and she's gonna rip back the curtain. I'm gonna go yeah. hi, <laughs> <laughs> 
and then she's gonna go clean the bathroom and you go home <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah this is this is where the main action is taking place between mm-hmm. the elves yeah. and Slanesh. Yeah. and when you're talking about the releases since since 2015 and age of Sigmar came out Aisha's gonna have a big future yes yes I think that it's the realm that's uh, coming up throughout the end of the year, towards the end of the year. It's the up and comer. It is. Like we that. we saw. It's awesome. The daughters of Cain, mm-hmm. over, a little over a year ago, mm-hmm. and then um, they're they're in Olgu, and then uh, it was Teclas, I believe, that uh, released the Ideneth Deepkin, and the Ideneth Deep the Ideneth Deepkin first <laughs> appeared in Heish. Mm. They were actually like their first establishment is mm-hmm. in Heish, okay. their, their kingdom, their their main hold before they spread to the other realms. That's that's in Heish, and it's all about these elves being re- released from Slanesh, and who Slanesh had consumed these elves in the world that was, and now we're harvesting these elves back so from Slanesh. Yeah, and this is the time of Slanesh yeah. right now. The the Hedonites of yes. Slanesh are being. Re- released right now oh yeah lordy i love these models oh man They're the so new cool. slanesh yeah. stuff looks so cool yeah. and that's like yeah. that's slanesh is now like his war with the elves is going to be between olgu and heish and the the realm of light and the realm of shadow and yeah and the realm of light and the whole philosophy around the realm the people that live there slanesh just eats it up Yes, Eats it up. exactly. Literally. Game of Hungry Hungry Hippos. But yes. That's what but I it picture seems him like eating all the elf uh, souls. Hayish is like where the, if you were to picture from Old World to, you know, Age of Sigmar, the High Elves would come from Hayish. Yes. And, High Elves, and the realm of light. You, yeah. Right. So that's no. where you're... you're now, you're, we're, we're, weren't you telling me in this realm... I mean, the emphasis on, is basically on enlightenment. Yes. Right? right. There's yes. an emphasis on that. And hence, I, I like that. I like the light, enlightenment. It's the uh, the higher thinking process of these elves. Is, is, is that true? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You and know that's, what? That, um, that's what they hold on high is those that are enlightenment. more enlightened than others. Okay. And so the oh, people gotcha. that are right. for, m- more forward thinking or more higher thinking and more deeper thinking and whatever it is like mm-hmm. those people are the rulers of this land essentially yes. yeah absolutely so you're a game of thrones fan correct mark uh, i'm sorry i'm not i'm not familiar with that show you're not familiar oh. with that show have you ever heard of it it's it's a hbo show and mm. there's it's about swords and boobs. Sorry. What I can gather, swords and boobs. Death and boobies, death and boobies, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe. Uh... Oh, it's funny. <laughs> it sounds familiar. Uh, Samuel Tarley ends up going mm-hmm. to the city of the Maesters. What's that place called? Old Town. Old Town. Yes, and you remember that one shot of the library of the Maesters, yes. where it's this big shot and. It's this library, this this towering building, and all these multiple, multiple floors, thousands and thousands of books on each floor. Instead of having um, your normal candelabras, your normal uh, lighting systems, instead, the tower has a series of like magnifying glasses that magnify the light throughout the building. That, for me, is a perfect image of what Heish what I would expect oh, a, an area right. of learning in Heish. Yeah. This is all about you enlightenment just see, like, and learning. It's all learning. It's all universities. Yes. It's all. Uh, and they, they talk yeah. about in the book about uh, like. To, like an animal house faction? Yes. There's, <laughs> no. there, well, there actually no. kind of is. But. Oh, okay. So they say that there's like 10, there's 10, uh, there's 10 different like regions that make up Haish. Mm-hmm. And so there's 10, so it kind of makes you think that there's 10 different factions essentially in Haish. One weird thing that I, I don't necessarily understand from the book because the tense that hmm. they use is really weird is they go and they talk about Haish and they talk about, this is where the elves basically settle themselves. 
But then, of course, the writer of this book says, then the human cities yeah. of Haish are magnificent. And blah, 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 blah. And that, then they start to talk about all this stuff in Haish. And I'm like, are you talking about elf cities? Or are you talking about human cities? And yeah. I don't think they designate clearly between the two. Yeah. And how, how many of these cities are shared? Yeah. Are they free people cities? Right. Are they like, are they cities for all of order? Yeah. You know, like. Is there um, diversity between elf and humans or is it just, there's, there's, you know, 10 magnificent regions of humans and then whatever, there's elves. Yeah. yeah there, elves. Was, there was at least one city that I read about that was a human city of enlightenment that was taken over. I believe it was, um, uh, Zinch, that Zinch had completely like wiped out this city. The one of the things that comes up here is the the idea of enlightenment, and you think of like Buddhists, these monks mm-hmm. that would like um, people that would, like want to achieve the Buddha level of enlightenment, where like your physical form no longer matters. Right. And they talk about in the realm of Heish, people do achieve that. They achieve this Buddhist level of awareness, of awareness where their their physical form melts away. Right. And they become awareness, enter- enlightenment. They become entities of pure thought. Oh, wow. No longer needing a body, and they just continue yeah. to exist in, in Heish. And um, people that are working towards that, they talk about in here that it becomes very competitive. That people are like, oh, well, you're this X level Buddhist. I'm this, I'm this next level up. I'm the Y level. And someone else walks in. Well, I'm the Z level. You know, <laughs> like, all right, this place sounds really douchey. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so really, it is. <laughs> this is really weird because no lie. Last night, <laughs> <laughs> I just watched a documentary. So my, my wife, I, I can't believe I hadn't watched this yet, but my wife had watched this years ago when it had come out. But on HBO, they have this uh, uh, Going Clear oh, uh, the documentary on Scientology. Yeah, I watched that one. It was from like 2015 or 2016. Have you seen it? No. But I, I know you have some opinions ago. on the Scientologists. Well, yeah, yeah. But yeah. literally just a year or just yesterday, I watched this documentary, and that is exactly it. It's this these yes. levels of enlightenment mm-hmm. that eat that people take, and they go, "Oh, what are you like, OT eight or OT four or OT five or whatever it is like?" And these different what color levels. jumpsuit do you get to wear? Yeah, you know what what little pin do you get to wear? Yeah, that that, that tells you what, what sort of stage you've been through. We are truly living in a bizarro world. I, oh, I don't, my God. I don't you know get it at all. Oh, their God. I don't want to understand. <laughs> what I think is yeah. really, uh, this is like news of the day yeah. right now. Uh, there is a Scientology cruise ship. Yeah. That it holds <laughs> which, yesterday, which is why I watched it, because yes. I was like, oh, wait. And she, my wife was like, wait, you haven't watched that, this documentary yet? And I was like, no. Well, but, if, anyway. if you're listening to this and you're interested in Scientology, I personally have had very brief experiences dealing with Scientologists and Scientology yeah. recruiters. Yeah. I mean, Come, I love me t- some L. Ron Hubbard books. Oh. It went, and I actually the, had a copy of oh, Dianetics. Battleship Earth. No. Oh, I had a Dianetics. copy of Dianetics. And uh, it was one of those things where it's like, oh, wow, he came up with, you know, something. This must be a really cool story. And it sat on my shelf for a while because I had quite a backlog. And then oh, yeah. It Fantasy just, novels developed and i'm like no no that, no, no, no 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 really that no that can't be that's this wasn't not, a sci-fi book it's not no it yeah it's like wait a minute no, it is a sci-fi i mean book. it is no, a sci-fi no, book, yeah but yeah people aren't treating it like a sci-fi book so th- there's a lot to and, the, and you know like so when you said like whoa this is yeah, what's Whoa. what's going on? Yeah. What's going on here? This is like, wait, people are actually taking this as serious science. <laughs> Did they not like the, read the news of the day? I'm Mark. I don't know if you heard about it. Yeah. This this ship that's owned by the they Church of Scientology. Yep. It's a cruise ship where they send yep. people away to go on. It's like a smaller cruise ship, 300 people. They get to yep. go on like a, maybe it's in the Gulf somewhere. Mm. They get to go on a vacation. Well, someone on the cruise ship was was diagnosed with the measles. And why? 
why were they diagnosed with the measles? Mm. Or why weren't they vaccinated against yeah. That's what I was getting at. having yeah. the measles? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you'll have ding, to ding, ask. Ding, ding. Yeah. You'll have to ask whatever. Uh, what Space Lord. Whatever Seraphon Lord that yeah. guards Zinu. the Church of Sontar. Zenu the Seraphon. Zenu the Seraphon. Yeah, Zenu yes. the Seraphon. He's Damn the you, one. Xenophon. <laughs> Xenophon, Seraphon, the uh, Lord Croak of the Church of Scientology. <laughs> yeah. He uh he said that you shall not be vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling like therefore he rolled they ten. Were, they're gonna and be so he got on the, the door extra any spell right now. that meant you were automatically diagnosed with yeah, measles. No, exactly. Measles. So yeah so all I gotta say is Papa Nurgle is just Oh man, he loves oh, the anti so And Papa Nurgle, Papa Nurgle in the, the kitchen. Yeah, he's Papa got a Nurgle new heard about this yeah, cruise ship. Yeah. And now yeah. this cruise ship was quarantined as, hey, you can't come back. You can't get off Every, this boat. Everybody stays. Because everybody yeah. could have measles. Yeah. We don't know if not, you have measles. He's not or allowed. Not. Yeah, we don't know. Is, uh, is and, 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 and the thing about. Scienti- the interesting thing about this is Scientology, it promotes this stasis of you are in this this state of being yes. that transcends like mortal uh, problems, <laughs> mortal diseases, okay. mortal things. And so technically I, measles shouldn't be a problem on a Scientology ship but, yeah. is okay. the moral of the story. Yes. Yeah. But, but I'm not getting it. The whole freaking religion is called Scientology. Science. Science <laughs> being the don't key let freaking the word. Name Science. Lead you astray. <laughs> Science. So why are not we, you know, why why aren't we sciencing the freaking hell out it's of this? It's not uh, Scientology. It's science. That's the other. That's a different religion. It's Scion. Uh, we almost got to science. Scion. But we tele- stopped. To, like Scion. Tele- yeah. You know, tology, yeah. Scientology. Like, not like, science. Tology. Like damn. Like like Battlestar Galactica. Scions. Was that science? Well, it, well, no. technically, Cylons. So you're thinking no. Cylons. Cylons. Yeah. yeah. Technically, apparently, to Scientology, any scientific, like any sci-fi story, has a bit of legitimacy. Is that true? Yeah. Well, I think so. Like that's oh. what I've heard is that. Yeah. That. So, L. Ron Hubbard. Yes. Right. Or yeah, he wrote. The, uh, that's he, L. Ron Hubbard. He is. He yeah. actually has the Guinness Book of World Records of the most published sci-fi books. And ever. novellas and all that stuff. Right? Yeah, Short it's like over been, a thousand yeah. wow. novellas that have been really? published. He is a sci-fi God. writer. And essentially, that's essentially as you ascend to a certain level of Scientology. Yeah. The 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 lower level, like the lower uh, le, the lower lower levels of all of the Scientology is all about like human morality and and self like preservation. Be a, just be a better person and, be a better and person and treat your treat your community well so and you'll be well and this, all this stuff trust me listeners this all relates to Heish. yeah continue please and then once you ascend to this higher this specific level all of a sudden you're given these special texts and these texts tell you about like these are like written from l ron hubbard and they're all about the this, sci-fi, the sci-fi, author. like the this this the actual sci-fi. no, fi like the sci-fi history of our universe, and it's yeah. all, all about like the the this Xenu race and this Xenu like how they survived the world that was and right. they came to the new age of myth and that they met with uh, Azir and yep. they met they came to Azir. And Sigmar said, Sigmar. you know what? Everybody's old world souls will be passed along to the new Age of Sigmar. It really does tie in very well to realm. the Age of Sigmar. And so all of a sudden, like, all these souls have, less, have left the old world. Mm-hmm. And then they don't, like, what they do is everybody born into the new world are an amalgamation of, like, one or many souls of previous souls and so you me adam as in the realm of wherever mm-hmm. hi, hi. Hi. Mm-hmm. yeah we are 
we 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 have souls inside of us a soul or many soul back to Haish. so yes. basic Hayish. i'm not liking this place now <laughs> basically <laughs> because it's all about the like yeah the elite yeah it, it is yeah. And, and and so yeah. really what what, so what happens is douchey. over time people have elevated the people of this of this of this realm yeah. and in oh, it, there's 10 wow. different regions right there's 10 yeah. different like factions or regions or whatever they stated here I, I don't see it like in a quick look but whatever it is like the 10 different regions those people have elevated their people of that region the the smartest the most savvy of like philosophical technological whatever yeah. it is like those people are elevated as as they they then become the honored then the revered then the sort of like worshipped yeah. people of those regions and it can be engineers yeah like it, it could be a carriage and overlord engineer who's got so much knowledge that his like knowledge gives him power in yeah Heish. Right, yeah. Right, all right. Yeah. And um and then and then throughout that time they figured out how to harness the so every realm has some sort of mineable um realm stone. Realm stone. And but this realm it isn't a realm stone, it's light. And light so itself. people in this realm have figured out how to harness that light inside of different sort of containers yeah and it's not light like you think it's not like photons in a literal science sense okay yeah, yeah. it's the light of the realm of heish which they have yeah coalesced in something called aether quartz okay. yeah all right this reminds me of like something like you know, like like the old Care Bear cartoons well, where like the one would shoot out like <laughs> fucking rainbows from his chest yeah, and stuff. Exactly. That's yeah. pretty close. Okay. I mean, right. It right. is because yeah. they, they actually call it translucent prisms. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> oh they God, harness okay. it into translucent prisms. They totally ripped exactly up Care Bears. Exactly like that. So you think of whatever in Marvel as the uh, – <clears throat> what's that um, – in uh, – what is it? The uh, first Avengers, they're going for the – the Tesseract? The Tesseract. It's yeah. in some sort of translucent prism. Oh. That's oh, what they've right. harnessed it inside uh, of. So, yeah, uh, Care Bears, Avengers, yeah. M- just mash those together, right? Yeah. Just mash yeah, Care really. Bears and Avengers. Bears and yeah. Avengers, and yeah. you got it. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, essentially, so because of <clears throat> people elevating these different people, like these, these, these people, it then became... A sort of competition between each realm or each region within Just the realm. Just like you're talking about with the Scientologists and like, well, I'm X level and yeah. you're only Y level, or I'm Y level and you're only X level. Like that, that, that happens here too. Competition with the Aether Quartz as a visible thing. You can actually see who's further up the spectrum as far as like their knowledge and their experience right. and how they can uh, use the and then- energy. And then just think like in our world we have countries and different things like that. Then think like, oh well, this continent or this country or whatever says, hey, I've got this, and these guys say this, and we have world powers, and we have people vying for different sort of different sort of like uh, just notoriety of right. who's better than others. Right. So because of that. Because of that sort of like draw to see like who's the best, who, who is the best performing, who is the smartest, who is the best looking, which dark god do you think <laughs> would just feel like, you know, what if I just kind of like help insert myself inside here and and say, hey, you be the best. Yeah. You feel like you're not yeah. the best. What dark god? Do you need some help? Yeah. What dark god? Which pop? And, and like, if you're dark ta- god, do you think? Dark god. And you're talking dark about god. like, I'm not just the yeah. best. I'm I'm better than the best. Luna yeah. knows. I'm, I'm and we're not letting her excessively in, so. better. You know, I'm yeah. I'm I'm excessive. It's excess- all about excess- excessively better. Excessively. Yes. Yes. Who's that remind you of? It's got to be some Slanesh. Oh. Yes. Yeah, got to be some Slanesh. And, but you, and I what, love me some Slanesh. That brings it back to the idea yeah. of these people being Buddhists. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? Where it's all about like who can go the longest without eating to to enchain, attain a light, enlightenment. Right. Who can go the longest in the same yogic pose? You know, who right. can go the longest with like, you know, this connection to the physical or disconnection to the physical. Yeah. It's all about excessively Slanesh took a giant hold inside of Haish. I like that. And yes. they like just because of the competition was so vile and so vigorous. They were people just answered the call. And yeah. Slanesh just ate it up. Ate it. I mean they Absolutely just ate up ate Slanesh up. and oh, yeah. they he yeah. just got in or she got in or whoever it is oh, like you know, it's one of just those, got uh, you know, he she just got right yeah, in there, yeah. and that's amazing. And then I, so so Haish broke, like it became it was this revered realm of knowledge and right. technology this and power. As well. And then because of this, like because they were competing so much, they let Slanesh in so much, yeah. it broke them. And it. so now it's essentially a realm just just uh, diseased of Slanesh. And from a Sigmar side, it's right. diseased of Slanesh. Right. And Slanesh, it's hey, broken. Hey, you get no problem with it. Yeah. Slanesh yeah. is like, woohoo, we've won. Sigmar is like, it's broken. And so now it's it's a realm of of of, of broken light. Mm. essentially mm. shattered and the prism has shattered exactly mm. and so you know each realm what they talk about in this part of the text actually which is interesting is that the gods of the realm what they mention in this mm -hmm. text is each realm has a god and each realm has power over or each god has a power over that realm right. based on the amount of loyalty to that god i like that which is interesting well, that, that, because that i don't sense. think they've mentioned that in any of the other realm texts no I, and I, so in this one I they think say this is the first time that's yeah they say because it's important you know, too yeah. it's hugely it's, important yeah. i was like what yeah and and, and that yes. brings about why all the gods are warring amongst one another exactly you and know, that's why who, like every gonna... time you kill uh a follower of a certain god. Yeah. It's a huge blow to that god. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like they can just like wait for more to show up. So long as they're like without that follower, they're without eyes. They're weaker. Yeah. They, they are, are they are significantly right. weaker. Yeah. Uh in the They've been hobbled. Early 90s there was a Dungeons and Dragons book, uh Dungeons and Dragons series. Yeah. The Avatar Series, mm -hmm. nothing to do with the James Cameron movies. Mm. No, no blue guys. No blue guys. No, but no they girls. had the same uh. philosophy that faith is a two-way street. They specifically say that in this book, in the core book, that with a god in the Age of Sigmar, faith is a two-way street. That as you pray to a god and get power from that god. That God is getting power back from you. They get it's, it. it's a benefit, mutual beneficial, mutually beneficial situation. Right. In this um, series, the Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realm series in the '90s, it was so significant that something happened with the the gods in that story, where they were cut off from their heavenly realm, which might be Azir in the if you were going to compare it to Age of Sigmar. Where they actually had uh, a, a diminished form of their selves cast upon the earth, so you would have like a slanesh, uh, a corn, you know, uh, a Tyrian Teclas, uh, Sigmar, a, a diminished form of them walk, walking the earth. So mm -hmm. like a uh, uh, like still like a godly, powerful being. But they're cast down into this mortal realm. If they are slain in that realm, they are gone for good. And they have to, like, rebuild their following to get back into that heaven. So they pretty much have right. to, like, start their own, like, Existence. church. 
their resistance or their own church, yeah. you yeah. know, like they have to like build their followers back up again. And the more followers they get, the more powerful they become. I like this. The, yeah. The, the, this is also very, uh, and I think I've said it before in other episodes, but very Neil Gaiman, American Gods. Yes. <laughs> you know, so yes. Just, just great, great book. I know the series is still ongoing, so we probably shouldn't do any spoilers, but, but, but we probably did before. But <laughs> oh well. That does open it up that, like, if there is a god in the Age of Sigmar that can, like, like an election, it really is like it's, it's the gods of Age of Sigmar are democratic. Yeah. If they have the most votes, they are the most powerful yeah. god. Yeah. And if they lose votes, they are not the most nope. powerful god. And they right. like so, so vying for and attention. It's not, vying the, and the for... election, the election is every day instead yeah. of it being once every four years for presidents. Like it's this election is happening every single day. Yeah. yeah. Every day. So if if you are able to invade the city of a rival god and wipe out a thousand followers, that's a powerful blow. Oh wow. man! Wow. Right. So. About Haish, yeah. Real quick, like the gods here are Teclas and Tyrion. Those are the elven gods are that are directly gods. associated with Haish. Okay, yeah. Haish. All right. All and right. so, and, and and so Tyrion is, I think, the 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 prominent god of this region. Yeah. And so he's now feeling like he's he's not gaining the stronghold over Slanesh. And so, so he's biding his time, and he's trying to, in this text, build up his following so that he can push back against Slanesh. Yeah, and that's where they kind of end. This is Tyrion is waiting for his next sort of resistance war against yeah. Slanesh. And correct me if I'm wrong, is Teclas that created the Ideneth? I think Teclas is Ideneth. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so All the right. when he created the Adeneth, he did create them in Haish. Okay. That was where they started. That was where right. you first did it. Because he he siphoned lost elf souls from within Slanesh and tried to form them into something new that would be a new champion army mm-hmm. for the elves of old for the elves of the old world but they became the adneth the soulless yeah who needed to hunt down hunt souls yeah to maintain their own form so it was a failed attempt to rebuild what they used to have i like that and teclas too teclas was the wizard and Tyrion was the warrior and they were the brothers that saved the high elves of old and so the wizard has failed and yeah. the wizards is font of knowledge so now you have Tyrion who Tyrion was famous for his rage in the old world he was famous for his bloodlust in the old world famous for his um, potency in combat but yeah not famous for his wisdom or restraint Uh, I think it's really exciting to see that Tyrion is still on the horizon for uh, new developments in the yes. Age of Sigmar. And that's, I feel like, where they left this. Absolutely. Was, got a lot of room Tyrion's for Tyrion's on the horizon. Yeah. So maybe the next wave? Next wave? Who so? knows? Mm-hmm. You know, and I, people Well, have you been... know, we've been talking for ages about Slanesh being the next wave. Oh, we yeah. just had the Slanesh wave. Ah, uh, yes. Malirian yeah. is also out there. So we've had the four elven gods. Um, Cain, the god of murder, is kind of an elven god. Marathi had taken the reins as being the priestess of Cain. So she siphoned her elven souls from Slanesh, and we had the Daughters of Cain release. Yeah. Teclas siphoned his souls from Slanesh. Slanesh and had but, the Ideneth Deepkin release. But the big guy in Ideneth Deepkin is Eidolon. Eidolon. Which I think draws from that Teclas power. Yes. It's not technically Teclas. Oh, it's not Teclas. So Tyrion well, yes. could have a High Elf style resurgence, but it's not going to be Tyrion. No, yes, yes. Yeah. Because, because Marathi, Marathi is not a god. Right. Marathi wants to attain godhood, 
like Teclas, Tyrion, and Malarian. Right. She cannot. She right. has not. But like we were talking about with the um, the number of followers, her followers are followers of Cain. Yeah. yeah. Right. Not and, followers of Marathi. Yeah. Right. Okay. They're followers of right. Cain. Mm-hmm. Cain is dead. Uh, his followers don't know he's dead. Only Marathi, maybe wow. there are other gods, but for the most part, only Marathi knows that Cain is dead. She holds an aspect of Cain, so a part of his body. Mm. Uh, there may be more aspects out there, and it may be possible to resurrect Cain. But for now, she has right. the mo the the aspect of Cain that's enough that if so long as people worship Cain, she can take power from this aspect that she holds. Yeah. She's able to siphon it. Yes. Yeah, through yes. That. So okay. she will never yeah. be worshipped as a god, and she's not. On, as of this point, she's not a god. She's not worshipped as a god. She is mortal. Okay. But she is siphoning the power of Cain. The more people that worship Cain, the more power she siphons from this aspect of Cain. I like that. Unlike Tyrion, Teclas, and Malyrian, who are actual elven gods. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. So that's why we okay. have we have Teclas, who's raised the Ideneth, but he is not mortal. He is yeah. a god, and he's in charge of them. So we still have... Tyrion and Malyrian, who are out there as elven gods, even though Malyrian is Marathi's son, Malyrian did attain godhood. So he is out there. He is an elven god. That's right. so cool. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's a whole like like, uh, pantheon. Yeah. I, I love Greek and Roman mythology. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So much yeah. fun. And Norse mythology, all the mythologies. All the mythologies. The, the Egyptian mythology. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's also fascinating, yep. and so seeing it translated into the Age of Sigmar realm is so much fun. Yeah, yeah. but the, specifically the 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 mechanic, the idea that the more worshippers a god has, the more powerful they are. The, the thought of like that makes sense, though. How many really campaigns does. could we run yeah. where it's just about demolishing churches? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Killing priests, destroying churches. Yeah. Like that's like the kind of thing where you could like you think about like World War Two, we need to bomb the ammunition dump. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's like taking out the church. Yeah. The take out like, the followers. Take out the followers, or take, take out, out the, church. the place where they follow yep. that. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe you diminish the followers. Yes. This seems like a good time to uh we'll take a break and then we'll talk um Realm of Battle, Artifacts, Magic. Exactly. Oh, yeah, let's, let's do, do it. That. All right, break time. The gods of the mortal realms are not omniscient. Even Lord Tyrion, who is physically blind, yet can reach out into the aether with a dozen other senses, cannot pluck visions from across the void. A deity cannot influence a realm without having some kind of presence there. And it is most commonly through their worshippers that they extend their powers. Faith is a two-way street. For just as the worshipper is empowered by their deity in times of need, the deity is given power by the acts of belief and devotion practiced by those who believe in him. The more people pay homage to a god, the more souls commit themselves to his creed. The more powerful that god becomes. Just as a realm gate allows a person to move from one realm to another, a faithful soul allows a god to move a measure of his power into a mortal world. So what are we talking about? Oh, Realm of Battle. Oh my god, we're back in Heish. 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 Oh, Heish. Uh, Before we get too far down that rabbit trail. Heish. Heish. We'll bring it back to the light. Heish. All right. So these right here, so the following Realm of Battle rules can be used for battles fought in the mortal realm. Of Haish, also known as the Realm of Light. Oh, imagine that. Okay. Yeah. So, right, so, Nicholas, what do you think of this? Remus, realm Sphere Magic. Wizards know the following spell and battles fought 
in this realm in addition to any other spells that they know. Fa's protection. The wizard calls upon the beneficent guardians of light to protect his allies from harm. Fa's protection has a casting value of five. Low. That's pretty good. That's, that's good. That's five amazing, is really actually. good. Usually With all the like buffs seven. you can get. Yeah, yeah. five right. is really good. All right, so what so, does it do? If successfully cast, select a friendly unit within 18 inches of the caster that is visible to them. Subtract one from hit rolls made for attacks that target the unit you picked until your next hero phase. Fa's protection, very nice. You combat, yeah. you, you combine that with a mystic shield. That's nice. Minus one to hit. Holy hell. Plus one to their, yeah. or, or re-rolling ones to save. That's nice. Fa's protection is really good. Minus one to hit. There's there's multiple ways you can get minus one to hit in the game depending on your army. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Minus one to hit That's is good. You think about all the re rolls people get. Yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. And the back and forth on the whole like when do you re roll? Is it before modifiers or after modifiers? If the re roll comes before modifiers and your modifier is minus one to hit, if someone's hitting on threes, they don't get to re roll those threes because yeah. they're minus one to hit. Uh, yeah. So all those threes, right. all, all those fours missed. Yeah. All those fourth fives and sixes, you know, they all miss. Yeah. And on some of the spells, you know, for death, for example, because honestly, I don't play a lot of armies that have magical abilities because I played a lot of dwarf armies. Dwarfs, so yeah, I do play a death army, and, and the glitz. Well, and the glitz, yeah. So I do have a new army, you know, that has you know a lot of the glitz magical the abilities glitz as well. So yeah, the yeah. Glitz. But for for the death army, I know a lot of the spells that they have have double options, but they're usually higher on the spell casting ability. So they'll say like, you know, cast on a seven or more mm-hmm. and, you know like the casting value is seven and then you subtract one from hits but you also sh- subtract one from bravery or something like that okay yep yep this is cast on a five that's and you amazing. subtract one that's awesome. so if we were that's great if we were fighting in this realm i could choose and be like well you know what i'm going to choose this because it's on a five and i don't think that guy's going to be able to get it yeah yeah having having a spell of that low of a casting value. It's an asset. Yeah. Anyway, command ability. I'll, I'll go ahead and read. Strike quickly. The etheric particles in this realm enhance the speed and reactions of those that live here. It is possible to harness the power and strike before an opponent is ready to strike back. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick a friendly unit within 3 inches of a friendly hero or 12 inches of your general and within 3 inches of the enemy. That unit fights immediately instead of fighting later in that combat phase. That's nice. And I'm, I'm used to the Daughters of Cain. I'm used to the Daughters of Cain having multiple ways to get this same effect. But unlike the Daughters of Cain, it says that unit fights immediately instead of of fighting later in that combat yeah. phase. Most that's of the stuff at the, the beginning of the combat phase. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's nice. At the beginning of the combat phase, too. So that does... That's before anything else. Yeah. So most of the Daughters of Cain stuff says fight in the hero phase. So mm. this is being able to jump at the start of the combat phase. That's pretty nice. Well, that's saying... You're like usually people that get the hey fight like you would in the combat phase in the hero phase you know what i mean like piling an attack in the hero phase like you would in the combat phase yeah bam you get this early on attack but this could be useful if you get a whole shooting phase or some other sort of magical well, phase it's, it's also a, a command ability yeah mm. And mm-hmm. it says at the start of the combat phase. Yep. It doesn't right. have to be your combat phase. Uh, if you have a command yeah. point, yeah. 
you can burn it. It can be your yeah. opponent's command phase, and you have a command point. Like go, boom, boom, command right there point. on the table. I'm fighting now. Oh, Just, that's brutal. Boom. Yeah, yeah. That's not even your turn. I like that. Not your turn. Doesn't matter. Command point. Blink. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Hit your face. Heish. 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 <laughs> that that this there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. To be able to, like just like the, strike we, quickly. We, we got this opponent. We got we got this fight. It's gonna happen. Boom! That's I'm very fighting elf-like now. Elf like because of the whole. Yes. Uh, what was it in uh, eighth edition? It was the, like uh, uh, always strike first. Always mm-hmm. strikes yep. first. Yeah. yeah that, and that that, that was, was a big cool. deal because there were certain I units. Hated that shit. Yeah. Oh my god. As a dwarf awful. player and an orc player. Always strikes Fuck. first was crushing. Gotcha. The high elves, high elf sword masters, mm-hmm. mm. they were awful. They're always strikes first. Oh my yep. god! All right, realmscape features. Uh, so we're rolling for these at the start of every every uh, game we play mm-hmm. in Realm of Light. Yep. The gleaming vista, the plane ahead is clear and illuminated by a radiant light. The Realmscape feature has no effect on the battle. As usual. There's always that one. Number one. Always Boring. that one. Boring. Mark, you want to take number two? <laughs> yeah, sure. A dazzling glow. So the structures and plant life of this realm often pulsate with glowing light. Subtract one from hit rolls made for attacks that target units that are in cover. Oh, that's nice. Ah. Okay, that's cool. So yeah. if you're in cover... Like subtract one. Oh, I like that. Oh, so is it minus one to hit if you're in cover? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, basically, yeah. Subtract so is that one minus from hit rolls. Two? So it's minus one no, from no, hit rolls. No, your cover is... Oh. As one to your save roll. Cover at once your save, and this at minus one to to hit a person in cover. Yep. Yeah. That's a nice combo. Nice. Yep. All right. Very good. Nicholas, speed of cool. light. The light in this land knows no burden of flesh, and nor do those that receive its blessing. At the start of your movement phase, roll a dice. On a six up, you can pick a friendly unit. Remove that unit from the battlefield and then set up it anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches from any enemy models. This counts as that unit's move for that uh, for that movement phase. That is nice. This is you know it applies to everybody, but to be able to just teleport, mm-hmm. it's one of those things that you just like competitively tournament wise competitively if you don't have at least one unit you can teleport you have to have at least something you can use that answers to the teleport yeah you have to plan around the teleports the nine inches away the speed of light is pretty nice what do you yeah. think yeah i mean it's it's a one out of six chances that you can teleport any of your units yeah because it's not you have to pick the unit and then roll it's you roll the dice and then you pick the friendly unit. Hmm. Yep. So it, it's a it's a one out of six chances you get to teleport a unit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not guaranteed. I mean, it's not guaranteed, but it's no, like, hey, chance. whatever. So I play off, it's three, epic. four turns in a game. I'm it's bound epic. to get a six, maybe. Maybe. Yep. yep. Maybe. All right. So let's say I have something that says, let's say at the start of your movement phase. Say I have something that's in my hero phase. Yeah, no, it's just nine inches away. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> it's it's a yeah. nice thing to have out there. That's just a random realm of light feature. That's fun. It just adds flavor to the realm of light. Yeah, you know that exactly. these people can just kind of blink in and out of existence in the realm of light. Yep. Damn. The next one, number four, domain of symmetry and purity. This region is suffused with the purest light, unsettling anything created from the raw stuff of chaos, darkness, and disorder. Effect is subtract one from the bravery characteristic of chaos, destruction, and death units. Wow. wow. It so benefits order. I, I, I think yeah. they're in, in previous memory i think order gets the short end of the stick a lot not in the realm of light in the realm of light if you roll a four 
subtract one from their bravery characteristic of chaos destruction and death you know there's no roll of anything oh it's yeah it's just subtract well, well, no, i know one. you like you roll for the realmscape feature oh uh, you roll oh, okay, for the realmscape okay, feature yeah, I see. the realmscape feature is four wow yeah subtract you one from four. every unit but order yeah that's pretty sweet mark what do you think of number five? Oh, five. All right so <clears throat> wilderness of broken dreams so some regions in Haish have been cast down by the subtle curse of chaos. Yes, chaos. Chaos. Uh, or broken by the violence of open war. So you want to subtract one from the bravery characteristic oh. of order units. Yeah, eat it. There's the answer back. <laughs> yeah. So you get one roll. Yeah. Balance. Four or three of them. Boo. And then you. Yeah. if you roll four, everybody's fucked. Yeah. You roll five. Order's Order. fucked. Yeah. Mm. Bam! Answered right back. Suck it. Yep. Suck it, order. <laughs> All right, six. Nicholas. Etheric beams of light. The magical energy of Haish travels the lands and skies as beams of pure yellow-white illumination. Wizards can tap into this energy to create etheric quartz prisms which will enhance their powers. In your hero phase, one friendly wizard can craft an ether quartz prism instead of attempting to cast any spells in that phase. If they do so, they can attempt to cast one extra spell in each of their future hero phases and attempt to unbind one extra spell in each of their future enemy hero phase. A wizard cannot craft more than one ether quartz prism per battle, though your other wizards can do so in future hero phases. Mm. Damn. I like it a lot. Yeah. That, that is very... That's very... It caters to the wizards. Oh my god, yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's very yeah. wizard heavy. Zinch, Slanesh... Elven units. Yeah. It, it, yep. it really is nice for all those wizards. Basically, in, take in a your break. hero phase, one friendly wizard. So you can't do it for all your wizards in no. one phase, nope. but you can continue to do it if you have if you have multiple wizards. One hero can do it in the first phase while your other wizard is casting the spell you need. If that if they can all have access to the same spell, it's pretty. So sweet. if a if a wizard has access to the same spell, yeah. Can each wizard cast that spell? Not in the same phase. Nope. So if it's turn one, yeah. hero phase. Yeah. Wizard number one casts spell A. Yeah. No other wizard can cast spell A. Yeah. No other wizard on your army. So say it's like Mystic Shield. It's your turn, your army can cast Mystic Shield. Okay. Once. The army. Only one wizard can cast yep. Mystic Shield. Yes. True. So then let's say you get access to a realm, uh, like a realm spell. Spell. Yeah. Or, or, or now we're going to, we're going to bounce into malign sorcery and we're going to do realm spells. Right. Even though all of your wizards know those spells, they can't cast the same spell. Per phase, per phase, only one wizard can cast a spell per phase. Okay, but say like you have three wizards. By the end of the battle, two of those wizards have died. Now at the end of the battle, that one wizard can still keep casting. He can still it. casting it because he knows if he, it. if he has access to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I just wanted to clarify that. Oh yeah. All right. Let's do it. And malign sorcery. Malign sorceries. Heish. I'm just going to go ahead and read it because I feel very articulate Do it. in my current state of mind. Spells of Heish. At the dawn of the Arcanum Optimar, the learned wizards of Heish watched an uncomfortable mixture of terror 
and scholar, scholarly curiosity as the very nature of magic changed around mm. them. New volumes were soon written on the lore of light and its use, and battlefields across the realm were bathed in its radiance. So here are the six spells of Haish. The first one is the Exercising Beam. The wizard unleashes a ray of pure, incinerating light. The Exercising Beam has a casting value of six. If successfully cast, pick an enemy unit within 12 inches of the caster mm -hmm. that is visible to them. That unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If the enemy unit is a demon, or death unit, it suffers D6 mortal wounds Whoa. instead. Whoa. Very nice for Heish. Yeah, nice. It's all about exercising wow. the demons and casting Exer down. Right. So the exercising undead. the demons, like mm. like the Exorcist, not like like Planet Fitness or not some like shit Planet like that. Fitness. Yeah. Okay, the Peloton, your new Peloton mm. cross trainer bike. Right. No. Yeah. Exercising, no, no, no cross. Yeah. Not, not, not no, exercising. Not like, Mark, not like cross training or anything like no. that. Not e Mark, x yeah. e r x e x o r exorcism. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, pretty cool. I like the spell. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Next number. Cool. Next one. Light of battle. Mark. Oh. Light of battle. So the clouds part at the wizard's command illuminating the battlefield and filling his allies with hope false hope i am assured so no that was actually wasn't part of it but <laughs> <clears throat> so light of battle has a casting value of five wow all right another low one mm -hmm. so if successfully cast pick a friendly unit within 18 inches of the caster do not take battle shock tests for that unit until your next hero phase. Not bad. Not taking battle shock tests very important. It, it really is. is. It really is. Well, the there's so many the out came. there. Yeah. This is the only thing I spend my command points on. Yeah. Not taking battle shock tests. That's it. Yeah. But the thing is, shows. with this, every wizard knows all the spells yeah. of this realm. Always. So a key element is you don't have to spend a command point. Possibly. Possibly. If you have an opportunity to spend a spell that you're like, hey, future, I may have to spend a command point on this later in the turn. I'm actually just going to spend a spell on that instead. It's, it's nice to have options. That's nice. It's nice to have something you can pick and choose to yeah. use. But with As that, a dwarf absolutely. player yeah. entering into the death realm, now that I have lots of spell casters, yeah. I'm like, oh, all yeah. right. Yeah, let's kind of, you know, mm -hmm. see yeah. what we got going on here. Absolutely. But yeah. it's still nice spending the point and having the sure shot. Yes. You know. Yeah, because you can only do that once, right? How many, well, how many times can you, you can do... try to cast that spell once, but then you can but, also spend, spend that yeah. command point later if you have to. For the... Um, True. Yeah. Uh, what is it called For when the, your uh, heroes don't have to take battle shock? That's called the no battle shock inspiration. Uh, you yeah. do that yeah. as long like as you have generals inspiration. Yeah, whatever, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. You, you, as long as you have command points, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Right. Um, I think the way my my daughters of Kane army is built, this won't affect them, but there are other armies I play that this will be very useful. Yep. The next one, Nicholas Vengeful. Illumination. The wizard bays the foe in radiating light, directing the arrows and bolts of his allies to their target. Vengeful Illumination has a casting value of seven. If successfully cast, pick an enemy unit within 18 inches of the caster that is visible to them. At one to hit rolls for attacks made with missile weapons that target that and that unit until your next hero phase. Thus, I, I like that. If you have a shooting army, man, yeah. fantastic yeah. to add to your army. The next one, Aetheric Net. Mark. Yes. Aetheric Net. What no, is it? Not, oh, wait, not, no, is it my turn? Yeah, no, it's, it's your my turn. turn. It's your turn. Aetheric Net. A net composed of pure light drifts upon the battlefield and stirring all those caught beneath it in unbreakable energies. 
If the Ragnet has a casting value of six, if successfully cast, pick a point on the battlefield within 18 inches of the caster. Roll a dice for each unit, friend or foe, within mm. three inches of that point. On a four up, that unit suffers one mortal wound and its move characteristic is halved until your oh, next wow. hero phase. That I, I like that because yeah. a lot of the time I'm willing to take that risk. Yeah. If it's if if I've got a unit that say say your your unit has like forty models left. Is your forty model unit of goblins now I've got my ten witch elves left blocking it. I'm willing to take one mortal wound versus your one mortal mm-hmm. mortal wound with the net, just to make sure that when you do wipe out my witch elves, you don't have any movement left, yeah. or your movement is halved. No, yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, you totally. I, I, I'm I am safe. I don't have to worry about those that unit, no matter how no. big they are. I don't yeah. have to worry no. about that you're, unit. Getting you're setting to me. the stage for the next round. Yes, or absolutely. When you target a hero that has to be within some sort of like buffer Ooh, zone. Nice, yeah. And and you hit him and the outer parts of another unit. Yeah. And now both units are halved. Yeah. And then the other units that are surrounding, you know what I mean? Like they want to, yeah. they want to advance, but they can't because now the other guy is half. Mo- you know, like yeah, yeah. You're like wa- a, you need this for, hero to keep up with you. Yeah, to for, buff you. You he can't for like a spider fang glitz army. Mm. It's crucial that the, you keep the general together. and the casting, like the. Uh, the big Ragnarok web spinner guy, like they're all close to each other. If they're not close to each other, they don't get the benefits of that. I don't get so it. So if you have those movements, that's crucial. So this is a this is a tip to you guys. Remember this. Absolutely. Tip. Tip to your tip. Tip, tip to, to your tip. tip. And then we're gonna space doc real quick. Tip to tip. Healing glow. Mark, healing glow. Healing glow. So the wizard channels the pure power of Haish, repairing even the most grievous wounds. So the healing glow has a casting value of seven. All right, so the mm-hmm. standard. Yeah. Right. If successfully cast, pick a friendly unit within six inches of the caster that is visible to them. Heal D three wounds allocated to that unit. So wow, that's right. good. So, yeah, it, it's, it's nice. Good. It's nice. They, but 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 it, they have it, to stick close. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Six inches. And is that healing D three wounds? Like you have to have multiple wound unit or multiple wound models. Yeah, to no, totally. Yeah, I keep coming back to that's that. like heroes to the, like the, and stuff. Yeah, the, right. Um. All right, so because they usually say, if you don't have multiple wound units, it has or to be models, a multiple wound model. Then you can replace models. Yeah, but this unit. is. I, I think it has to be a multiple wound model. Yeah, mm-hmm. for it to work. All right, Agreed. so the last one, banishment. Uh, Nicholas, ma- banishment. The wizard seals the enemy inside an impenetrable crystal prison. That carries them away across the battlefield. That sounds like the neutral zone. Old school oh, Superman. Oh, yeah. Remember? Banishment has a casting value of eight. If successfully cast, oh. pick an enemy unit within 12 inches of the caster that is visible to them. Remove that unit from the battlefield and set it up no again on the battlefield more than nine inches from any models from the caster's army and more 24 inches from the caster. Nice. So. Wow. That, that, uh, that's fun. That's I, like cool. that. I, I like that. Anything yeah. that lets you move a model from the enemy's yeah, unit. Yeah, no go. Uh, so much fun. Yeah, get over Banishment. here. Banishment. Get, get over here. That, that's like true wizard battle shit. Yeah. So like, uh, that's like, somebody. hey, whatever. You're going 24 inches from me. Right get the now. fuck away. 
All right. Nope. Artifacts of power. Weapons of Heish. The first one. Page. Artifacts of power. Weapons of Heish. Blade of Symmetry. This blade cuts through both body and soul. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons to be a Blade of Symmetry. Add one to the damage characteristic of that weapon. Mm. You cannot argue with that. that I mean, no, that's just that basic shit. Yeah, yeah. Plus one damage. You can't go wrong. If you hit and wound, plus one damage. So if you if you wound twice, four damage. Yeah. D- fucking awesome. Yeah, Fucking totally. great. All right, what's the next one, Mark? Gleaming blade. So this blade invigorates the wilder whenever a blow is struck. So you want to pick one of the bearer's melee weapons to be a gleaming blade. Allocate wounds inflicted by that weapon before allocating wounds inflicted by any other attacks made by the bearer. If one or more wounds are inflicted on an enemy unit by that weapon... Heal one wound allocated to the bearer. All right, that's uh, that's nice. Uh, if you yeah. if you um if you know that your bearer yes is going to be fighting a mob of opponents yeah just just let like let this bearer slog into a mob of whatever useless units. Count on getting one wound back. You can just count on getting one wound back yes. with this. Yeah. Am I wrong? I swear. No. That's the way I interpret. No. Yeah. It's like send the hero in, keep him alive. Keep him alive. All right, Nicholas. Luminary rod. The simple staff channels the ether into a devastating beam. Once per battle. Which, honestly, when anything says once per battle, I'm like, meh. But anyway, I know. I know. Let's continue. Yes. Once per battle, pick a point on the battlefield within nine inches of the bearer that is visible to them and draw an imaginary straight line one millimeter wide between that point and the closest part of the bearer. Each unit other than the bearer that has models passed across by this line suffers D3 mortal wounds wow now that is each unit to me that diminishes the artifact i, I it's a each one model? it's a one it, it's a one shot like i think it's like tony stark when he pulls out that whole laser thing that, that he comes out of his armor yeah Death it's awesome. like it's, you know what I'm talking about. It's like all of a sudden like you're beat to shit, beat to shit, beat to shit, and then all of a sudden this, and it's oh, like, oh look, Whoa. they're lining up. Where was that yeah. from? I like mean, scenes ago. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's lining up. Death blossom. Yeah. All right. So the next one is the sun blade. Those struck by this blade are blinded by bursts of prismatic light. Pick one of the bear's melee weapons to be a sun blade. Allocate wounds inflicted by that weapon before allocating wounds inflicted by any other attacks made by the bear. If one or more wounds are inflicted on an enemy hero or monster by that weapon, subtract one from hit rolls for that enemy hero or monster until the end of that phase. It's nice. There's a lot of these that you can find out there in the, all the different realms that like subtract from the opponent. So this is one that's subtract one from hit rolls from enemy hero monsters after you've hit them. Right, but the you have blade. to hit them first. You right? have to hit them. But you, say you do you do what you normally do. All you have to do is hit them. Once you've hit them, now they've got that minus. Now yeah. it's 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 nice to just like. All of these end up being like, I'm going to make my hero better at hurting you, or I'm going to make my hero yeah. better at stopping you from hurting me. And a mind True. game. Defense. It's a mind game. Because now all of a sudden you have to go, wait, if I don't attack that guy first, then he's, uh, he's got all the going to make me like minus one to hit. Uh, do I attack here? Uh-huh. Or do I attack here? And then now yeah. all of a sudden, like, that's where you want to be. You want to be fucking 
You want to be fucking with their mind. All right, Mark, what yes. does the crystalline blade do? Crystalline blade. So this fragile-looking blade strikes harder than its form suggests. So pick one of the bearer's melee weapons to be a crystalline blade. Add one to wound rolls for this weapon. So totally simple, yeah. straightforward. Add one to wound rolls. Nice. Oh, that's good. If you've got a weapon that does like six attacks with yeah. a three up to hit, yeah. add one to wound rolls. That's good. Yeah, it's just totally. straightforward yeah, no, damage. No, that helps. Just Do it. straightforward you damage. You slide that in. It'll be helpful. Nicholas, what's the number six? Prism Amniotic. The prism can focus the light of Hish onto a devastating beam. In your shooting phase, you can pick an enemy unit within eight inches of the bear and roll four dice. For each six up, that unit suffers one mortal wound. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't say only once. It just says in your shooting phase. Right. You can, it's, if you've got an enemy hero, it's a shooting attack. Essentially, yeah, you've given yeah. your your non-shooting hero a shooting attack. If you've got a non-named hero that you know is going to be the main target of your enemy, yeah. if you've got someone that's like, like Mister, like Mister Moneybags for buffs, like mm-hmm. he's just giving buffs out all day long to all your units. And you know everybody's gonna be coming out of nowhere to kill this dude. You just give him this whole like prism of Amtiok, and he's just gonna like, oh, you're trying to shut down my buffs. Yep. Sixes. Yeah. Mortal wounds. Mortal wounds. All right. Artifacts of power. Relics of Heish. The first is the Aether Quartz brooch. Aether Quartz is what all of Heish is about. The Aether Quartz brooch. Brooch. Bridge. This fragment of Haitian realmstone contains small glimpses of the future. Ooh. Each time you spend a command point, roll a dice. On five up, you receive one command point. In man, so, that's amazing. Let's just say, I don't care what, where, what army you are, what faction you are. You get to pick this list for your artifacts. Yeah. If you don't have any other, like, I don't have anything in mind. I don't care where I'm from strategically. You can just pick this and say, like, bam. Each time you spend a command point, roll a dice. On a five up, receive a command point. That's legit. Yeah. That, yes. Totally. That is usable. That's a that's a 33.333% repeating, of course, chance that you get... A command point for every time you spend a command point. And guess what? The whole, like, Las Vegas Open, LVO, this was the most common artifact. Really? really? This artifact were common. I I could be wrong. I am 99% certain this is the number one artifact chosen by people that went to LVO. Nice. Because command points are legit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Command points... Even if you're just talking about inspiring presence, yeah, I don't have to fucking roll for battle yeah. shock. For battle shock, yeah, fuck that, that shit. sucks. Yeah, I I take uh, I get you it. take a fucking shitload of wounds mm-hmm. against a thirty block yeah. of witch elves because yep. I know I have laid a shit ton of shots against your. Which elves? And how'd that work out for you? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> fucking battle shock. Presence. Yeah. Battle shock is so important, and not having to take a battle shock test. Yeah. I count on round one not having to take a battle shock. I have to have. I have to have me with my daughters at cane. I have to have one, one command. command. Point. Point. To not take a battle shock test round one, I count my entire game depends on me Mother. not taking that battle shock test. So, <sighs> Aether Quartz brooch, not surprising. It was one of the most popular <laughs> artifacts at LVO this year. Yep, Aether Quartz brooch All number right. two. 
Mark. Oh, lens of refraction. So this lens channels malicious spells away from the bearer and their allies. So each time a friendly unit within six inches of the bearer would suffer any mortal wounds from a spell cast by an enemy wizard, roll a d3 and reduce the number of mortal wounds suffered by that result. That's not bad. Yeah, that's a good defensive one. Right there. Yeah. You know, if you're you were, be if you by were, some wizards. this is one of those wizards. that, like, the wizard. If, let's say, if, if the game were written so that you had to pick a realm and that every hero in your army got one artifact from that realm, then. Yeah. Then I think Heish would be super popular because totally. I think there's a nice artifact. But if you were going to pick two from Heish, you're going to pick number one because yeah. number one was the most yeah. commonly picked artifact of all uh, of the realms. Yeah. Really? Well, yeah. Well. All right, Nicholas, mirrored. Well, that's Quiris. where that's where the whole, you know, when you're when we're fighting these narrative campaigns, this is where this is going to be like. Hey, we're here in this. We're here in this realm. This is the artifact that you have. Yes. Yep. That's, we're not. I, like, I really like separating the idea of, like, you this. You get to from, keep it. Yeah. You get to fucking keep it. Separate this from matched play for a second, and we are all doing narrative play. Yes. Then I feel like tons of these artifacts open up. Yeah, it's a lot about like what you get and what you can do at the time that you have matched play. Of course, number one of this realm, bam, people are going to use that. Number two, no, people aren't going to use that. Number three, here I am. Number three, the mirrored curus, the polished armor is capable of deflecting etheric energy. Roll a dice. Each time you allocate a mortal wound to the bearer, on a 5-up, the wound is negated. On a 6-up, you can also pick an enemy unit within 6 inches of the bearer. That unit suffers one mortal wound. That's... It sounds really good. 5-up, the wound is negated. Six I up. Hate, I hate five up. I know, but like it's not like a, it's not another roll. If you roll a five, it's negated. So it's a five up ward save. Yeah. If when you roll a six up, you also get to take that wound you would have had and shoot it back. That's. I mean, that's nasty. All right. I, I I see a lot of motion from I'm Mark gonna, over I'm here. Gonna, Mark, number four, let's go. Right. No, we're going number four. No, Man, it's me. It's no, me. It's no. my turn. Go, do it. Go, I go, like go, go, mirror, go, go, I mean, go, go. I like go. mirrored Quiris. It's pretty uh, do amazing. It. Number four, light shard. When its carrier is struck down, this gem projects coruscating beams to punish the attacker. If the bearer is slain oh, before sure. removing the model, roll a dice for each enemy unit within six inches of them. On a three up, that unit suffers one mortal wound. That's nice. It's a nice yeah. little like suicide bomber yeah. kind of thing. There's other things I think that do it better. Anyway, Mark, number five. Five Guardians Coronet. Uh. Swirling light surrounds the wearer, instantly solidifying to drive away enemy blows. So once per battle, at the start of your hero phase, the bearer can call upon the Guardian Spirits. If they do so until your next hero phase, roll a dice each time you allocate a wound. To the bearer on a four up, the wound is negated. Yeah, eat that. Uh. Oh. So on a four up, you have a wound save. Yeah. I, uh, that's not bad. Yeah. No. Once for battle? Really not bad. Yeah, no. Bad. no once, Anytime it says once per battle. Oh, once per battle. If it says oh. once per battle, uh, I, I would say like. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's once per battle. Yeah, once per battle. <laughs> oh, fuck that. No, 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 no that sucks. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Loose balloon. Yep. 
So here yeah, we go. Yeah, no good. Sash. Yeah. Sash of the Ten Paradises. Yeah, that sounds very Slanesh. Composed of pure radiance. This sash provides the wearer with a measure of the speed of light itself. What? Add two inches to the bear's move characteristic. Uh, not not to be shrugged off. Not shrug to be it. like not to be ignored at all. Add no, two inches to the move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Dude. You could get where you want to go with an extra two inches plus your run. Yeah, so say, say like, okay, so I've got the Daughters of Cain, right? Most of the time, they get a plus one to run, plus one to move. Yep. If I can, if I can guarantee a plus two to the, the move of a hero. Yeah. If I've got a Cauldron of Blood or I've got a... Uh, a, a uh, a Medusa. Yeah. I'm like, I, you know what? My whole strategy is I want my Medusa to fight. She's already got a 14-inch move. I'm going to give her a two more-inch move. Maybe I throw in the, the whole uh, endless spell. You know what? I think two it's a good time. can make a lot of difference. Two inches. Two oh, inches. Yeah. You ask the right person. Two inches means a lot. That's what she said. Yep. What? We're going to take, take a break. We are. And we're going to wrap it up. This is our break. Wrap it we're going to take a break and we're going to wrap it up. The God King Sigma could not well perceive the Tourmaline spires, those blinding geometric pillars in Aish, until the ever faithful Lord Relectors of the Tempest Lords braved the deadly beams of light that refracted between them in bringing the faith of Sigma to those benighted reaches. The priests of the God King's Creed gave him focus and extended his reach, allowing him to gather a mighty celestial tempest in that region. In doing so, Sigma tipped the balance between the Elf, Stormhost, and Slaneshi ness that had deadlocked the region for months. Similar bonds of spiritual energy bind every priest and deity in every realm. True faith can change a world. Well, All right, here we are. Hey, what are we drinking? Oh, this is what are we drinking? One, what, one of Atlanta's finest Terrapin Hopsecutioner. Executioner. Yes. That's uh. If you hear the dog barking in the background, that is Luna. She loves beer. She loves she beer. She loves IPA. Yeah. And she loves, she loves lizards. And she oh, loves my God. She wants to eat but all of the Florida lizards. Not Same as with Mara. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. And, yeah. Hump, and humping my leg. Yeah, Man, Luna yeah, she, will hump your leg, she, my leg, yeah, Nicholas's she's, she's leg. She's a mad yep. humper. The matter. Yeah. yeah Don't it doesn't matter. matter. She will Legs hump it. Leg. She'll hump it. She'll hump it. Give me all a right. leg. I'll hump it. We've been talking about heish. Yes. Let's right. finish this up. All right, so we've we've gone through all the books. We have. Yeah. Your army is from Heish. Yes. Mm. What are you thinking about? Oh, Mark. Ooh. I'm thinking. Um, so so everything is like rays of light. No, it's rays of light. You, you think about like that. One of the things they talk about that's yeah. not in the books. That's in one of the websites I found. They talk about one of the Fire Slayer lodges. Okay. And that they are from one of the uh, Heish areas. Yeah. And that they have these lenses that they've used because of all the knowledge and the, and the, the engineering. Mm-hmm. They've got these lenses that they've used angled towards the sun to make their forges hotter than other forges. Oh, wow. So their weapons are based on uh, metals that have been heated Mm-hmm. To temperatures higher than any other forge, right. so their weapons are better than anyone else's. Just because like mm. the Thor movie. Yes, exactly like uh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok or uh, Infinity War when he's like restarting the star. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because at first I envision like this land like uh, like Harry Potter the uh, and the Death- Deathly Hallows Part Two. You know where uh, Dumbledore is. 
in the afterlife oh, or the, uh, you the know, glowing the, the, air. Yeah, the that, magical um, realm. It's just everything is just like ooh, glowing. You see, you know? um, what was it called? Attack of the Titans? Yes. Yep. The, sec- the remake. If you look yeah. at the cinematography in the remake of Clash of the Titans, it's all white. Yeah. It's glowing with white lens flares everywhere. Yeah. It sounds very like in the Heish Slanesh kind of realm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of like the old like Disney movie of Hercules. Mm. And just it's this yeah. very you know Greek and Romanesque style stories that are kind of just meshed together. All those that, stories are very stunted. They're, they have a very limited perspective of what is existence. But they're happy. They're like... They are. They're happier because they're Disney, right? <laughs> oh, sure. They're, so they're not going to be super dark. And to me, that just reminds me of this, like, Aish style, like, hey, we're smarter than people, so we have this level of arrogance this level of you know life that we've been around for a while and obviously in hercules they're not that advanced versus right. our day and age sure but that we can tell as, right but as far as like a herculean style era you know like there's a there there there's there's these these people that they they gravitate towards a hero and when they gravitate, they gravitate towards that hero. Good things happen towards that hero. Yeah, and that that comes back to that whole philosophy in the I high eat. section of the book, where it's like you get more, the more people devoted people to your follow cause. your god. Yeah, yeah. So a god might be more interested in like throwing their banner behind someone who they don't necessarily like, but who has a lot of followers. You're right. And that's how you end up with a capturing, yeah, 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 yeah. You end up with like someone who does not be deserve to be right. in a leadership role. <clears throat> they suck. Look at yeah. me. Yeah, it's but, almost like but a risk they're... board. Like we're all gonna start, yeah, fresh, yes. and we're gonna take turns, and we're gonna start to take over the board as we feel necessary. It's almost like two different games. It's yeah. like they have the risk board with the general sign trying to win the game, yep. and they have the second second game with the gods determining where they're going to put their pieces and mm. absorbing the pieces the generals have. Sounds There's cool. a lot of really interesting stuff that could go down if you've got a fight, not just a war of men, but a war of gods. I feel like Haish opens that can 100 that i haven't seen in the other text yes and it is it's written reciprocal plain, sort it's, of it's relationship. a reciprocal relationship correct that's what i get out of this i get that, and because they say apart from azir or whatever they say apart from azir you know like if the god doesn't gain power in that realm they're not the leading god yeah they need to gain followers to gain power in that realm. And they need they to do things. They can't transcend realms, is yeah. what it says. They can't trans. So Nagash, for example, if he doesn't move into Gairan, he doesn't have control of Gairan. Mm-hmm. He, he, ha- even he has to gain control in Gairan in order for him to... But his power in, excuse me, Shaiish won't be the same as his power in Gairan just because of one follower one in Gairan. It, Absolutely. It has to be an like what I hear is his power in Gairan is only dependent on the amount of followers he has in Gairan. Or at least his influence by. Right, his influence by. So if his influence is 1% in Gairan well, then he's 1% against 99% whoever else. Yeah. All the destruction gods. Right. They, they, exactly. Like, you know, Slanesh moves into Gairan. If, yeah. if they don't have the same amount of people, 
Mm-mm. They're one percent in Guyran. Well, they're one percent in Guyran, and if Deaths is one percent, yeah. you know, like they're one percent. Tyrion, Marathi. They have to actually gain Malarian. followers to gain traction. All that jazz. Yeah, yeah. it's. it's I, I think that mythology and that that is a really exciting thing game wise yeah. in a way that for storytelling. Yeah, is what we're looking at. Interesting. It's actually more democratic than i thought it was yeah it really is yeah and uh with our all of our discussions about what we wish we had from a monthly skirmish mm-hmm. subscription yeah i and i'm excited for myself i'm excited for all of us i'm yeah. excited for our listeners about what we think we have on deck for all of us to enjoy if mm. you are a fan of skirmish if you're a fan of character-based leadership in your skirmish games, leveling, if you like, role-playing, yeah. if you like D&D, and you want to incorporate yeah. those ideas in yeah. skirmish. Start a character, grow a character, yeah. play the character. Isn't that nice? Yes. Yeah. That's, what, that's what we want to do. So uh, between now and next episode, Mark, what you got going on? Put me in the spot. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Finish this beer. <laughs> That's a good plan. Painting project wise, what do you got going on? I have uh, corn. Corn. You got yeah. a lot of corn. You yeah. always Jud- have corn. Judgments always of corn. corn. Uh, but hey, you got corn, you, you got all some the new... corny shit. Yeah, yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, How's that Archaeon uh, model? Ooh. That's gonna come out. That's gonna. Come out. That's that's. I think after I get uh, the um, terrain, uh, which is the throne. Oh. Or, or, you know, so, yeah, and the judgments of corn. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to come out next. So oh. very nice, very be, nice. It, it's it's been on the to do list. Nicholas, what have you been doing? <laughs> well, I've painted the Nagash model. Holy shit! You didn't really y- that you, you gave. I, you painted that model. I painted the Nagash model. What the fuck? I need the only I need thing pictures? I have left to do is a base. I just have to base it. All right, so when he's based, we need to start doing some like one-on-one hero battles. Uh, oh, that is going to come. I like that. I've got... Yeah. Olinder. I have completely painted hero-wise. I have Marathi. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have Marathi. the mortal and the uh, snake form Marathi yep. yes. completely painted. I have Lady Olinder. Yep. Mm-hmm. I have What's-His-Name with the Wings... Uh, Reichner, 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 the Grim Hailer. I have him yeah. wholly painted. Kurnos, the Craven King. Oh, uh, the Craven King. Yeah, the Craven King. King. Ah, the Craven painted. King. Yeah, right. You gotta have yeah. um, what's his name? The uh, Bloodthirster. No, 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 the little guy. Slambo. Slambo. Oh yeah. All right. Did you pick right. up Slambo? I gave him as a gift. This guy. You've got to fucking up. paint you that guy. You have to fucking right. paint right. Slambo. So Slambo. Fucking paint Slambo. And Archeon. No matter what so you do. Slambo, Archeon, anything else is gravy. It's Slambo. Huh? Slambo yeah. and Archeon. Freaking cool. Paint okay. those two guys, yeah. and you'll be golden. We. Uh, I've got the Nargloth we, that um, I was originally purchased because yes. he kind of looks like a bloodthirster. Yeah, he does. totally. And yeah. I was like, hey, you know, with my... Uh, Space With Marine. my Chaos Space uh-huh. Marines yeah, and the, you know. Those of you that are out there, if you don't know, the Reaper Bones, the Reaper Miniatures. Four? This is their four? fourth Kickstarter. Reaper so Bones. Reaper yeah. Bones yeah. Four. This was their fourth Kickstarter. It just completed recently. We got our delivery a couple days ago, and uh, we are going to do a special edition of the show where we... Uh, show our uh, like like our drafting because yeah. we kind of like we all contribute to it we buy some specific models to ourselves sure. but then we we kind of like throw in to kind of draft the core, the set. core sets the core the stuff additional we sets up. stuff like that yeah but we're gonna bring bits so there's gonna be a lot of trading. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, look at our yeah. bits, older yeah. Reaper stuff yeah, that we have, exactly. we older Warhammer that yep, models yep. that we have, and we're, just kind of throw them into like a sort of a trading barter. I think, right. That's always a challenge because I look, I look at that and I say, yeah, that's on the shelf. It's taking up space, yep. and is it really important to me or not? 
Yeah, and like, do I need it? Does it bring me joy? Mm-hmm. Will I need it next year? Mm, There's a third yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. I might need it. Right, like, because we're we're, we're all yeah. dealing with these models. Yeah. We're all thinking of these ideas. I don't play chaos other than chaos space marines right. and 40k. But so that last any that last email, you saw the last email about the war the um war cry. The war cry and the, the slaves of darkness or whatever. No, the s- cell swords. Oh, the cell swords, right. Yeah. Before that, I'm thinking like, well, I don't need anything chaos in Age of Sigmar because I don't play Age of Kiz- or right. Age of Kismar, Sigmar, yeah. Kismar, yeah. Chaos, yeah. Kismar, Kismar, Chaos, Kuzmar, Kuzmar, Chaos. I don't Kismar. play the Sigmar, Age of White Castle. Kuzmar. You know what? It's almost two a.m. It's a Saturday night. We've talked about pizza. We've talked about the realm of Heish. We've talked about the Church of Scientology. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like yes. we've covered all of our bases this evening. Yeah. My name is Nicholas, mm-hmm. and uh, I dig the realm of hi hi. I love it. Mm-hmm. I, I I like to see the elves desperate. desperate. I love to see the elves desperate. Oh man! Because you know what? In every other like world, they just have their shit together, and you know what? In the Age of Sigmar, yeah. they don't. Because what they're the fucking fuck, man. broken. And you know how what? many elf factions are there and how many dwarf factions are there? Oh dude, there's so many dwarf factions. It's so good. That's cool. The, the KO are so cool. And the fire slayers are like way ahead of the Idneth and the Dollars of Canada. I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Way ahead. Right. And so as a dwarf player, I'm like yeah. you know what? You guys will figure it out, but you know, nice. You're good. You're good, kid. You're good. You're you, good, you kid. Got good ideas. So, I'm good with that. What about you, Mark? Me, myself, I feel like uh, the realm of Hayish, the realm of light, is like a John Hughes film. So it's, uh, yeah, it's like it's it's waiting for Joe Pesci to show up. Well, no, 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 and more, like, more, more like breakfast club, torch on you know, forehead. kind of thing, you know, you know, everybody there. It's a little douchey. It's uh, you get your uh, main archetypes uh, that uh, you know the sticky bandits. Yeah, no, 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 Sh- no. Deborah John no, Hughes. You, yeah, no, you, you got sixteen like the, candles. Yeah, you got, you, you're you, thinking Breakfast Club. Yeah, you got yeah, no, exactly Breakfast Club. You got you got like the jocks. You got the the, you know, the jock. Yeah. And the the snuggly guy wears the big coat. Yes. Yeah. Him. Him and, and the girl uh, that doesn't say a lot. Yeah. Well, not so much. Yeah. I, th- I and think. And then the I, 16, 16 candles. Yeah. I was, I, I was gonna say they're a little like the transient weird science from the guy. other. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. Weird science guy and yeah, the yeah. frog brothers. Yeah. The fr- yeah. Because all they're yeah. all in. Different movie, yeah, but it's all related. It's all related. So very well put. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. No, that made no sense. Yeah, no, I, I was I wanted to go where you were going. I couldn't yeah. get there. Yeah. But you know what? We all love each other. We're yeah, wonderful we people. Yeah. This is the end of the Heish episode. Yeah. That's right. That's the end of our uh, realms of Age of Sigmar. I know. This all is of them. Actually, our eleventh yeah. episode yeah. is over. This is yeah. If, if hey, guess what? Beyond this, we're going to have a lot of good content. We're going to have stuff that you guys are going to be able to play each time that you play a realm of Age of Sigmar. Well, like so we've taken the knowledge that we've yeah. gained from these realms. Let's give something back. And we are going to give something back. We are going to give you back tactical options to play the next realms of age of sigmar that you play yes that's what we're gonna give that's warlando that's what we do that's what we're doing thank you for listening and i am adam and this is mark and this is nicholas and we are warlando and what do we say yeah motherfucker need another beer This has been an episode of Orlando. 
I am Adam. You can reach me as Warlando77 on Twitter or just Warlando on Instagram. You can reach Mark on Twitter and Instagram with the handle of Warlando Mark. You can reach Nicholas on Twitter and Instagram with the handle of Warlando Nick. Please leave comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And thank you very much for listening. Aish, the realm of light.